All right, hey, what up? Thank you for tuning in. This is Splash checking in from Head Above Water Channel. You can find me on YouTube at Head Above Water Channel Asia on YouTube. Subscribe there. And right now I have not just a guest, but a player partner on the line. He's the author, author of the book Love Can't Wait, which can be found on Amazon.com. He has a website called ChooseYourRelationships.com. He has a YouTube page called Guy on Girl TV. You should subscribe to his YouTube channel right now. Ladies and gentlemen, on the line with me right now, I present to you Sharp Game. What's going on? Happy to be here, man. Oh, man, it's good to have you. Yeah. So, all right, we're going to talk about a few things. Number one, we're going to talk about uh, this little propaganda piece that the Western media is trying to uh, promote out in the West, saying that uh, women in Asia are choosing to be single. Then we're going to touch on what what happens when women, uh, quote unquote, choose to be single and the hardships that they find out later on in life when uh, they, you know, they're single too long. Then we're going to touch on Issa Rae and her comments on dating Asian men. Then we're going to touch on a little bit of Kanye West. So, Sharp Game, uh, first and foremost, like, what's your opinion on the lives of unmarried women in their 30s and 40s in Korea? Well, you know, it's, I mean, it's been going on for a long time. It's how they socialize their whole dating construct has been set up like that for as long as I, as long as I've been meeting people I mean, they've been telling me like, this is how it's always been and it's still going on today and um, I think it's, it's uh, when it comes to a lot of old people you know um, look they people they don't they didn't start, no one cares about old people you know even <laughs> in, 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 in these other countries what I think they haven't figured out how to capitalize off of old people. That's the thing. As soon as they figure out how to capitalize off of old people, so they'll say, hey, okay, we'll help old people. You know, look at these old people. I feel so sorry for them, you know, but we can make some money off of them too. Until they figure that out, then the old people will be just like the old people here in the USA, you know. But they don't really care about old people. Don't get it twisted. But there's no money in it. That's why a lot of old people, you know, they work till they die, basically. You know, so it's, you know, when I see videos and pictures like that of old people having to do things that they shouldn't be doing, it's kind of tragic, you know. But that's just how uh, their society is set up, you know what I mean? Right, I mean, I guess it's a different culture, but... Um... You know, what they're trying to say is, like, marriage is no longer a necessity. It's an option. But in this video here of the lives of unmarried women in their 30s and 40s, later on in the video, they show two women on issues that they're having that really has nothing to do with just being lonely. I mean, it does, but it plays a part into the healthcare system. But one of the women, she was 41 years old. She's a florist. And she says she's dreamed of becoming a good wife and having a family her whole life. And then she said by the yeah. time she was in her 30s, she said, well, I'd rather focus on my uh, my career as being a florist. I'd rather focus on that. And I think having a family would just tie me down. I said, hold on, because this video got over <laughs> 518,000 views, and people were <laughs> arguing with me in the comment section of this video. I, I'll post... I'll post the links of the videos that I'm talking about at the bottom under this video. But I said, hold on. I'm like, by the time she, quote unquote, made this decision in her 30s to not have a family, to focus on her career, nobody was rocking with her anyways by the time she hit 30. Exactly. <laughs> nobody wanted exactly. to get she, with her anyways. Exactly. She didn't have a choice. That's why she chose to focus on her career and business and everything. I mean, I, I've met very few women from that part of the world that don't want to get married and have a kid and have a family. I mean, there, there are some out there that are not interested, but those women are very 
few far in between, you know. But I mean, it's like it's just it's just too many women in uh, Korea and Japan, and everybody's not going to be able to get married. That's just the reality, you know. So I mean, the the. I mean, they can say what they want to say as far as in the media and with the videos, but the reality is, look, if these women were the women that they claim to be, they they would have gotten married in the early 20s. Exactly. And what they're showing, like the statistics, like they did a data analysis of, uh, I think I had too many S's in that word, whatever, but they did a data analysis on... Uh, unmarried Korean women in their 30s and 40s. And back in 1985, it was around about 97,000 women were single, you know, that were unmarried in their 30s and 40s. By the year 2000, that number had damn near quadrupled to 382,000 unmarried uh, women in their 30s and 40s in Korea. Yeah. And then in 2015, it shows 1.4 million women are unmarried in Korea in their 30s and 40s. And yeah. this little propaganda piece, I think it's really propped up by uh, Western feminists. You know, because yeah. I noticed when I went to Korea, a lot of women, they kind of, you know, they were adopting this feminist mindset. I don't need a man or whatever. You know, I, I don't... It's it's yeah. me choosing not to be with an asshole. <laughs> yeah, yeah. See, a lot of these, the the feminists that's in uh, these European countries, especially in America, they'll use these other groups of women to uh, promote their message and their agenda. And just like I said, um, the, the plus you got to look at the standards of guys that's in Korea, the, the bar is very high. They set the bar very high. And a, and a lot of these women, regardless of what any feminists say, these guys are not going to accept a lot of these women. <laughs> They're just not. You know, so, <laughs> right. I mean, right. it's just it's what it is when it comes to that. I mean, poor yeah. thing, you know, while I was watching this video, you know, I mean, and the woman, she's very attractive. Like, she's not ugly at all. She's 41 years old. She doesn't no, look like it. No, she's not. But, yeah, she's not a bad-looking woman. You know, poor thing. She was standing on a on a little miniature ladder, you know, trying to change yeah. a light bulb in her, her kitchen. I mean, you know, she could have slipped, fell, yeah. busted her neck. And it's like, that. I mean, I'm not saying that's a man's job. <laughs> like, a woman can't do that. But it's like, you know, I mean, she looks so pathetic sitting there. Drinking her little uh, ginger ale by herself. Long she way. doesn't even have a pet. She has to change the light by herself. That that roof is probably like eight feet tall. <laughs> you know? Yeah, it's like women. And you know, women don't want to do that you, if they have a man. <laughs> <laughs> no, they don't. And you know what's funny? I know women like that here in America. Her 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 same age and everything. They focus on their career. Focus on starting some type of business and they're lonely and the same problems they have over in Korea the same problem they have over here when it's time for them to move to you know from place to place apartment to apartment house to house they can't find nobody to help them can't find no guy to help them move exactly. they gotta pay somebody to help them move so that so regardless of where a lot of these women move to or migrate to, I should say, a lot of them still have the same problems. <laughs> and you know what, like, I'm glad you mentioned that because, you know, a lot of these women on Instagram, Facebook, they're posting up thirst trapping pictures, and, you know, they have yeah. hundreds and thousands of likes and you know, oh, yeah. hundreds of comments, you know, I mean, you know, a lot of men saying vile <laughs> shit, you know, talking about eating a woman's ass and, you know, just very yeah. disgusting in the comment section. I know it's even worse they in love the DMs. It but the thing is, they is it. Yeah, right. But the thing is, is like when it comes down to getting help from a man, when it comes down to, like you said, moving or changing a light bulb or, you know, changing a smoke alarm. Because, you know, black folks, 
an average black household, you know, that smoke alarm has is, is been going off for the past 10 years. You know, it's like they can't even get a man to change the smoke alarm battery in the house. And yeah. when they when they put out, you know, a status saying, hey, I need somebody to help me, blah, 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 blah. Nobody sure. The next following <laughs> status is like, well, fuck everybody. I'm going to do me. I'm on my own. Nobody want to help. <laughs> fuck y'all. I'm like, damn. Like, where are all these thirst yeah. trapping dudes at? <laughs> because they they just don't see those types of women like that. That's the problem. They don't they see them in a different light. You know, they see them as a good time girl. They see them as just something to do, you know, but they don't take these women seriously. That's the problem that a lot of these women have. And see a lot of women think they can try to boss the guy around and Try to you know tell him what to do, and I said no. The best thing a woman can do is be uh, submissive and be very nurturing to a man. That's the best thing she can do. And if she, a lot of women don't know how to do that, you know, For, they feel like they have to boss the guy around and you know to treat him like one of the girls. <laughs> right. That yeah, just doesn't work out like that. <clears throat> And, and, and you know what, like in this video, it said like the drastic jump largely resulted from women's increased labor force participation. So a lot of these women, they're like, hey, you know, I, you know, I want equality. I want to be as equal as a man. I could do the job, too. You know, I, oh, no. I, I want to do this, this, that, and the third. And I don't mind a woman getting out there and hustling for the family. I don't mind that at all. But the thing yeah. is, is. You know, as far as culturally over there, these men are looking at them like, hey, like, you can get you a little job or whatever, but I need you to focus on the house. You know, it's like you trying to yeah. you trying to sit next yeah. to me <laughs> at work. Yeah, yeah. It, yeah, yeah. Is it and, and that's there's nothing wrong with that. That's that's fine. I don't think I don't see anything wrong with that. You know, but I think there's something wrong when a woman's think she's equal to a man. We're not equal at all. Now, there's some things that women are, are good at doing. There's some stuff that guys are good at doing. But we're not equal. That's the mistake that a lot of women make. You know, I don't... And, and the funny thing is, a lot of these... This stuff comes from the feminist mindset. And, and see, a lot of these women that push these agendas, guys don't want them anyway. Guys never wanted them. <laughs> And a lot of these women are uh, clever. They'll preach the, put, try to preach the feminist, independent, and all that stuff. And then, and some of these same women will go back home to their husbands, and while your your while your household is being broken up because you, you're treating your husband like crap. And the woman that's the that's really clever, saying, "Hey, I'm." I'm going back home. My husband, I ain't breaking up my house, my family for this. <laughs> Y'all crazy. You know, some of these. So that women, goes on. So that goes on too. Right. And some of these feminists, like they're not even. Some of them are are, are lesbians. You know, some of them don't even yeah. have. You know, husbands. They are living. You know, there's nothing wrong with that, but they they just choose um, same sex relationships, same sex marriage. So while a woman wants to be a feminist but doesn't want to be a lesbian, it's like that's not going to work out for you. And, and this woman, she said marriage is not only a union of two lovers but of families, which I found very burdensome. I'm like, you know, I mean, you know, you could choose, wow. you could choose your path, but the video goes on to say that, you know, because these women – are you know they they, they don't they, they find it quote unquote burdensome they don't want to marry anything you know not not being able to find a mate leads to other issues these women are being targeted for sexual assault crimes <laughs> you know? well you know i mean they don't have to get married you know so you they can have everyone has their own opinion about what marriage is and what it's supposed to be that's totally fine you don't have to do it but you know that's their prerogative when it comes to that. Right. But I I don't think a lot of people even know what marriage is really all about. The stuff that I hear most people talk about pertaining to marriage, it ain't really got nothing to do with marriage at all. 
<laughs> and see, the thing is, I don't think a lot of people don't know the history of marriage. They don't know how it came about. They don't know what the purpose was of marriage was. It it, it wasn't ever supposed to be for the working class in the first place. That's why so many marriages are failing today. Because people, you know, they just think that it's all about feelings and and having a good time and all the other rest of the nonsense that's just ridiculous today. Yeah, it's like a status, you know, to a lot of people. It's like people get whipped. You know, that's the, you know, I guess that's like the highest level you can go when somebody's sprung is to just get married for love. And it's like, that's not why you should get yeah. married, you know. And um, no. The video goes on to say I mean, that currently 40% of female workers have irregular jobs and earn only about $1,500 per month. And that's not, and if you can't find a man in a, in a patriarchal society in like Korea, you can only earn $1,500 a month. I mean, you're, you're screwed by the time you get older. <laughs> yeah. You know, I mean, it's some, I mean, some of these women, um, you know, when I first started like traveling over there and living in Japan and everything, I didn't understand why age was, the, the age of a woman was such a, and such a big deal. And I, I realized that, you know, a lot of these women, they don't last long health wise. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, this, this is very important I, and you know I don't hear anybody else I, I think I'm the only person that really talk about this that I've heard you know the, the a lot of these women get sick like like early in the 30s I mean they have all kind of mental issues uh, like you know the, the diseases and so a lot of these guys say, hey, you know, you get married early, you have kids early, you get it all out the way, you know, because <laughs> it's like they just fall off and hit a wall. So I'm like, <laughs> gee, my goodness. You know, I didn't know this until, like, I started to um, travel and started to really talk to more people in, in, in you know, parts of, like, Korea, China, Japan, and all these areas and i and i you know i talked to some of these guys i said hey why why is it so important to get married early and have kids and they say hey because you know the woman can't even if she gets pregnant um in the 30s she still might might not be able to, to have the child yeah yeah they could so, lose so it they, uh, yeah so they have all type of problems and and and, and cancer is like an epidemic so I'm oh, like, yeah, my yeah. goodness. I mean, they they get cancer early over there. I'm talking like, God, like 30. Right. So I'm like, my goodness. So, you know, and then um, it's just a lot of stuff that happens over there that nobody, they don't talk about it. It's kind of <laughs> like, I don't even know if you can call it taboo. It's, it's more like... Uh, <laughs> This is just how we do things. That that's t that type deal, you know. So, right, you know. Right, but if right, you're, right, right. but if but if you're an outsider coming in, I mean, you you don't know, and you're probably gonna get taken advantage of, on you know, in some in some way. That's why me personally, like, I mean, in this day and age, I don't want to get married at all. But especially, I I just don't understand why anybody want to get married in Asia, like, if you find love and that's you, maybe that's just my opinion, you know, I, I don't want to speak for everybody, but me personally, I mean, this day and age, I wouldn't get married at all, especially to anybody in Asia, you know, why would you want the leftovers of the leftovers of society, <laughs> you know what I'm saying, you ain't even getting the good scraps, you know, you know. You know, every, everybody in the in the main society, they're getting the chicken breasts, the legs, the thighs. You know, you getting the gizzards and the beaks and the the chicken feet. You know what I'm saying? You ain't even getting the good shit. <laughs> God damn shit. You know what I'm saying? It's like these women are psychologically off. 
You know, like, I yeah. mean, could, could you imagine? Exactly. Could you imagine being pressured your whole life? You know, you got to be thin. You got to look this way. You know, you, you, you want to be educated, but you, you can't be too educated. You want to be smart, but you can't be too smart. You know, you got to do this for a man. You got to cater to a man. You got to do this, this, that, and the third. And you got to look cute, you know. And, and then uh, you got to find a man that you can damn near bow down to. You don't want to find one and you mess with too many foreigners. Okay, the men, you're, you've been ostracized from your community. Now you go to a foreigner that's like, okay, I, I, I'm going to go white because white is right. Then you get ran through 30 or 40 white dudes and then you're like, hey, uh, something's <laughs> telling me these aren't the one for me. Then you keep moving down the, the totem pole. Now you're frustrated and you're pissed off that you have to keep moving down the totem pole in your mind to men that you think are less than you. And by the time she gets to you, this my, this woman is psychologically drained and off yeah. that she yeah. doesn't she doesn't respect you. And in your mind, you think, OK, it's a culture difference. You think, OK, no. you know, I, I just got to adapt to a culture. No, this woman is disrespectful. There's a rhyme and reason <laughs> why she's not yeah. with her man, w with somebody. And, and nine times out of ten. I see a lot of these guys over in, in, in America or over in the West. And there's a lot of brothers, too. They're like, oh, man, I'm done with American women. You know, I, I, I want Asian women. You know, these women out here, they ain't shit. I want Asian women. I'm like, have you ever traveled outside <laughs> of Arkansas? They're like, no. I'm like, what is it about Asian women that you think is much better than American women? They're like, well, they're much more compassionate. You know, they're. You know, they care about your feelings. They cater to a man. I'm like, you no, be... Not really. <laughs> these women, these these no. leftover women, they have it in their minds that, you know, these women are like 27, 28. They have it in yeah. their mind that it's a burden. That's not really how they feel. It's just that, imagine, they. I mean, like, they feel just like you. Everybody's like, well, to hell with you. You're no good. So... Of course, if she messed with somebody she thinks she's better than, what makes you think she's going to treat you better? Like, she's pissed off that she's walking around with you and then people are judging her for walking around with you. Th th out here, this isn't a place to really get married like that. Then you have biracial kids. Now the kids don't want to be black. The kids are making, yeah. the other kids are making fun of the your, your child because they're mixed. Now... You know, your your child's coming home crying. Dad, I don't want to be black. Why am I black? Why is my hair this way? This, this, that, and the third. And you're like, damn, I'm I'm stuck out here. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, kids kids uh have a hard time over there, man. And uh, yeah, kids really need their fathers more than than anything in uh places like Korea and Japan, man. And um, you know, <clears throat> It's just a lot of um, it's, those women go through a lot over there, man. I, I'm telling you, I, I just they 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 go through a lot, man. It's like they're hard on women in these other countries, man. You know, and I can understand why, but I think there's a uh, sometimes they take some guys take it too far. You know, there's a, uh, I mean, there's a, a lot of um, psychological issues that a lot of women have, and and plus, just see, whenever I hear a lot of guys say stuff like um, Asian women are better than than black women, I almost know a hundred percent that you know they probably ran into a maybe uh, they, 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 they might had a bad apple, you know bad experience with, with with some black woman and see they'll start talking to the Asian woman and they think just because a woman treats you nice that doesn't necessarily mean anything that no, that could be a, a short term deal or could be one night mm. and, and, and that's that could be mm. a form of manipulation as well because she's doing she's behaving in such a way because She's looking for you to do something in the end. 
and uh, or within a certain time frame and then then when you don't deliver or if you lose your job you get hurt you lose your contract and then she starts to treat you badly then you know that's when the real person come out then so and then they be like hey man why is she treating me like this she changed she didn't change she was like that all along but you just playing the game and a yeah. lot of men, they think that because a woman is having sex with them, that they respect them. And, he likes me. Yeah, like that doesn't <laughs> mean anything. Some of these women, you're the only hope. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Yeah. You are the last choice. And they, last, they, you're the last stop. Right, and they're mad at that. Like another survey they did in Korea, they said like – um, out of all the single women in their 30s and 40s over there in Korea, they asked them, are you preparing for old age? Only 37% said yes, and the other 63% said no. Like, they're not prepared for old age. So you got oh, women. Oh, no, no, no. Right. You got women over there that they're not even preparing for old age. They just don't give a fuck. They don't <laughs> and, care. They and, don't. And you're scooping these women up, and... You're scooping up a woman who doesn't even care about herself. So, exactly. See, that's that's what I'm talking about. A lot of these women don't really value human life. They've been conditioned to be that way. They don't see, you know, like one of one, like when, like if let's say if one of our siblings, our parents die or whatever, you know, we we, you know, we feel for them. We're gonna miss them. You know, we're not gonna be able to see them again. We think about that stuff. Just like every like every day I think about my parents. You know, mm-hmm. they they both gone, right? And so I think about them damn near every day since they passed away, right? But mm-hmm. you got these women, on the other hand, they don't think like that. They don't see the value of human life and friendships and they don't see it that way. You know, they look at it like if they gone, they gone. Good riddance. You know, it's like damn. It's like it's like they might cry at the funeral or, or at the sitting up or whatever, but after the, the next day comes along, it's like, oh, let's, let's, let's just keep it moving. They're gone. That's it. Bye. You know, it's like it's something psychologically that has happened to a lot of these women to make them. I don't know exactly how it happened, but you can't be a regular human being behaving like that <laughs> exactly like like i i, I here in korea i mean i, I here in uh, thailand uh me and my two homeboys like we was at the golf range yesterday and we was talking about this we was talking about because my homeboy he has a girlfriend but his girlfriend is okay with him having a side piece you know that that's their relationship but she, yeah. you know his girl is 24 years old he doesn't she doesn't want him being with a another woman younger than her and he's like, oh, okay, really? whatever. I, I can respect that. But he's like, it's not that I don't want to get with anybody a little bit older than her. It's just I can't because he goes, you know, I'm talking to some of these women on Tinder. And, you know, I'm screenshotting some of the conversations that I'm having with these women. He goes, I'm showing it to my girl. He's like, I mean, you don't understand what's out here. These women are insane out here. Like, I, I don't, I don't want to get with any woman that much older because these women don't care about themselves. And I told him, I'm like, I know guys out here that have caught AIDS and HIV by women out here, and th- these women didn't bat an eye. That's yeah, the thing. That's Some of these I'm women, saying. they're they so broken by society, they will give you AIDS and won't bat an eye. Yeah, I have no remorse, no nothing, you know. And it's like they, if you, if I look at some, look how some of these women eat, what they eat, you know, mm-hmm. they'll. I mean, there's a, there's no secret. If you go to China and Japan, they know that most people get cancer through soy products. They already know this. It's not like it's a big secret, anything. They've been noticed like 20 years ago, but they still eating the same food, bro. They're not changing anything. Right. They, they, they. I've been to the hospitals and the doctors over there. I've been with people that went, and I just see how people observe, how people react, how the doctors react. They get you in there, run you through the system, and it's like, 
they act like you're supposed to come up in there. Like it's, you know, like it's designed to be this way. And there's no saying, oh, I'm sorry. You know, it, at least in America, the doctors here, they don't care about you even. But at least they show a little compassion. Just a little bit. But in mm-hmm. these other countries, like Japan, it's like, they just run you through the system, get you in and out of there, tell you what it is, whether you like it or dislike it. And, and people will leave. And it's like there's no compassion for themselves, no compassion for anyone else. So I'm so I'm asking questions, you know. I'm like, hey, you, how do you feel about that? What what are you what are you gonna do next? Oh, all right. You know, I'm just ask, asking them questions. What kind of options they have over there? Because I don't know. I mean, I know how it is in America, but I don't know how they operate over here. So it's just a different. It's a different way that they function and do business in these other places, man. Right, and, and when you, you were talking about um, a lot of these people getting sick, like out here in Thailand and the hospitals out here, like the hospitals, all these hospitals, they stay packed. You know, like oh yeah, I'm talking about like it will take you a long time before you're seen by a doctor. I mean, there's nowhere oh, yeah. to sit; everybody's standing because all the seats are filled. And the thing is, there's no government support, you know. So here you have women who are throwaways, the leftovers. Then psychologically, it's kind of like, Broken, you know, man. right. It's like everybody tells you you ain't nothing, but psychologically, you know, you you want to brag and prove how much you're somebody, even though, you know, you probably made some poor decisions in your life. You know, for the for the simple reason as to why people are telling you, you know, you are the way you are, but now it's like, okay, nah, you know, it's just burdensome, blah blah blah, to make you feel better. So later on in that video, this thirty nine year old woman, she explained how she's single, her roommate that she lives with is single, and she says that if there's ever uh, an if I ever have an emergency, if I ever have an accident where I need a uh, medical <clears throat> a medical emergency surgery but I'm unconscious usually the way health insurance is set up over there is like um somebody in their immediate family will have to sign off the consent form from them now if her parents pass away her husband or her children will have to sign off for her but she doesn't have a husband or children so nobody can sign off the consent form for her 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 roommate can't sign it off for her so if she lives a vegetable her whole life, it's like, hey, you know, that we, we can't, we can't, you know, nobody was able to sign a consent form for her. You know, we can't just pull the plug on her or pr- operate on her if that's not really what she wants. You know, like, because it, it's, that's just the way health insurance is over there. So it's like, mm-hmm. you guys can chase some of these women over there all you want thinking, okay, oh, man, I came up on this. When really a lot of these women are only getting with you to be married, to have status, to, to, to secure themselves. It's really not about love. I know so many – I know two guys right now, yeah. they marry Korean women. Both of them, they were, like, significantly older than them. Like, these women are 10 years older than them. So they didn't yeah. want to live in Korea. They They – force their husbands to be like, hey, no, we're not living here. We're going back to America. So they go back to America. They get better jobs. And both of these guys, their wives said, no, they don't want no kids. So now their wives are like in their 40s. They're in their 30s, early 30s. And they don't have any kids. You know, they're just married. There's no sexual activity. I'm like, basically, you just, you're you're the immigration officer. You were her sponsor. That's it. Yeah, a lot of these other groups of women, they're, they're what I call status jackers. Mm. You know, they they always looking to upgrade status wise, socially, politically, financially. You know, that's they're like status jackers. As far as they don't necessarily see, they don't really. It's not really about feelings when it comes to to them. You know, you know, you know what a funny thing is. I find this interesting. Now, a lot of these group, a lot of these women, 
when they're around their people, it's all about the group, right? right? Now, when they leave that group, and if they get with you or me, then it becomes all about them now. <laughs> I find that to be very interesting. So I'm like, wait a minute. How do you how do you leave the group where it's like a, a group thing? You know, it's, a lot, it's all about what the group think and all about looking out for each other. And, and, and then when you leave that group and come over where I'm at, now all of a sudden it's supposed to be all about her. I find that to be very interesting. Well, because like, like well, because like <laughs> these women, these women, like when, when when they were playing their role in society, or when they tried to play their role in society and it didn't work out for them, their community shunned them. So it's like now when they get with you, it's like okay, I'm not good enough for my own, but I'm better than you. All yeah. Right, so it's now it, when it, you ask that. them and, and, and you know they don't care about themselves or their culture because when you ask them like, hey, um, tell me about, you know, who's your favorite, you know, Asian actor, Asian singer, Japanese actor, Japanese singer. They're like, I don't like none of this they shit. They don't know. Exactly. They, they don't so like none the of the whole <laughs> Exactly. I found the same thing. Because you ask them, um if I say, Hey, uh, you ever been to this place in Japan or, you know, tell me about this rapper in Japan, you know, cause I, I, I know some Japanese, I, I, I follow some Japanese rappers, some Japanese singers. I say, Hey, what do you think about this person? They don't know. They don't know anything. They, they like, I said, you ever been to this place in Japan? No, I've never been there before. I'm like, really? So they don't really care about their culture. It's just a, it's just coffee talk in most cases. The only people you're gonna find that really care about their culture is the old people. They have like a sense of pride. Even some of them are broken, but they do have a sense of pride and a little compassion, you know. But the younger people, it's all coffee talk, man. It it just sounds good. You know, it's something that you can say in front of people and people will be like, oh, really? It's, it's impressive. Yeah, whatever. <laughs> right, right. But, the, but, but if you're an outsider coming in, you don't know this. And, and see, you're going to get taken advantage of and you're not going to be able to learn this and notice and understand this until later. You know, <laughs> right, right. I, me- I remember this one guy. He was in the chat room with us online messenger, and um, I was explaining this. You know, we were just talking about this, and I was explaining this in the chat room. And one guy, he got mad. He was like, "What are you talking about? No, they love us. I pull women of quality. I pull women that you know. Most of these, because I say, you know, you, you guys are." pretty much pulling leftovers. I mean, it ain't nothing wrong with that, but just choose the leftovers how they are. You know what I'm saying? Like, you know, just, yeah. just, just, you know, don't, don't build up feelings for the leftovers. No, I'm, exactly. I'm, I'm, I'm with women that most of these Japanese want to get with every time I'm walking around with her. They're, you know, they're looking back, they're staring at her and blah, 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 blah. So he posted a picture of her. Uh-huh. And one of my other homeboys in the chat room, he's like, "Man, like, why are you posting her? Like, th- that woman's that, that she- woman that woman has smashed every black dude in Japan. That woman travels to different cities in Japan to have sex with them." He goes, "I've hit it." Then another person in the group said, "Yeah, I've hit it too." <laughs> then another person in the group said, "Yeah, I've hit it too." So then somebody yeah, yeah. DM me and is like, "Hey, you know, I I don't I didn't want to say anything, but I I I hit it too. You know, I, I don't want to put." that out there knowing that everybody else hit it but i hit it too i'm like damn so yeah. half the room then smash your girl and you thinking like okay damn i got a prize yeah. and you're proving my point right <laughs> yeah i mean i met a few japanese women that are like that they go from town to town they'll go from base to base yeah mm-hmm. there's some uh japanese women i meant that they got around like that but um as far as to as far as to uh, responding to if you have a prize or not, if 
if you if the Japanese girl can speak English, she's probably <laughs> not a prize. Right. You know, if she can right. speak English, she, see the best Japanese girl don't know how to speak English. So you, so you would have to learn how to speak Japanese first to get to find your prize. <laughs> right, right. right. <laughs> I mean, it, you, you see, it 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 all depends, though. You know what? What about because you know these parents that have a little bit of money, they put their children in language, you know, English classes ever since you know they were probably like four or five years old. They start them out pretty young, the ones that got money. You know what I'm saying? What, so, not, not, not in Japan. Not, not in Japan. In China, I heard it's like that, right? Well, I mean, everybody can't do it because everybody doesn't have the money. It's really people with money that can afford to spend money on classes. They do that. But no, nah, in Japan, yeah. I mean, there's... In Japan, the, fun, the funny thing about Japan is they teach them English in high, all through school, all through elementary school, junior high school, and high school. But but somehow, they still can't speak with a damn. <laughs> <laughs> right, because because some like between Chinese and Japanese, um, their language is pretty complicated in itself. Like they don't have an alphabet system. Like you know, uh-huh. Japanese they have hiragana and katakana, which doesn't take that long, but they have all that kanji. You know, there's a lot yeah. of there's a lot of uh, characters that they can't even speak. Like they they can't recognize. Like they're still learning. You know, yeah. in their adulthood. But, exactly. you know, I mean, I, I, I think like if her English, I don't, I guess if a woman's English is really good, she's kind of putting her own culture to the side. It's like, hey, I don't really care about this shit no more. I, I, I really want to focus more so on English. But sometimes people want to live a better life and go over to America because, you know, from the pressure of the family. Yeah, a lot of pressure. Yeah, I think I think as far as putting the, the culture to the side, that usually happens in in America or any, or any um, you know, like maybe in Europe someplace. Any woman that, that leaves Japan, a lot of them will put, will pretty much throw the culture out of the window. You know, unless they unless they move back. Now, if they get a visa and stay over here in America for like 10, 20 years, 30 years, something like that, more than likely, they pretty much threw the culture out of the window, you know, because um, a lot of what's, what's, what's different about most Japanese and most of the other groups of people that's come over here, the Japanese, they're pretty much all over the place when they come here. They're not, they don't, you know, they don't congregate amongst each other and look out for each other. Yeah, they might give you a job, but they're not going to come together and build together and start businesses together. They don't do that over here. No, at all. You know, they'll they they kind of do their own little thing and you know, they'll call each other when they need a favor or you know, it's like, "Hey, you know, I'm going to be at the restaurant like later on today. Would would you like to meet up?" It's like yes or no. If you can't make it, okay, see you next time. But when it's time to invest some money into something, they'll be like, oh, I'm sorry. You know, I don't know if I'll be able to do that. So, so they, they're they kind of all over the place. They kind of get in where they can fit in. And, and this is based on how they see, you know, America, basically. <laughs> yeah, you make, a, you make find, an interesting point. I've never seen a Japanese town anywhere in the world. Yeah, they just don't. They don't really rock with each other like that, you know. They they kind of like they kind of like us. How, how we function in a, here in America? We kind of have our own little clique of people, own little crew of people that we congregate with and associate with and meet with. But when when it's time to really make some power moves, it's kind of like oh I don't know I got to think about it. I get back <laughs> with you, you know. Uh, you know if you say hey could you do me a favor? Could you like um, just Give me a shout out, or like, could you get put in a good word for me? They'll be like, oh, okay, I'll do it. And they'll lie to you, you know, ninety percent of the time. 
and move on. <laughs> so that's that's what they do when they come over here. You know, and I know these people personally too. I know Japanese people personally that move here and they function just like that. They're not gonna tell you no. They'll say yeah to everything. You know, it's like and but they're not gonna go through whatever it is. That's how it is, you know. It's like they see each other, they put on a good face. Hey, how you doing? You know? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but it's like, you know, it's like if you say, hey, uh, I'm having a cookout. Why don't you come over? You know, they might or they might Hell not. No. It'll be 50 50 chance. If you tell her, check this out. If you, it has to be something in it for her. If you tell her, hey, um, I got a friend that might be interested in you, I want to introduce you to him. Oh, she'll come then. Yeah, she'll yeah. come then. Well, they'll be like, hey, but if you tell is her, it, is it gonna be some white folks over there? They'll come over. Um, <laughs> whatever they whatever they're interested in, whatever type mm -hmm. of guy they're interested in, that's gonna be determined why they're gonna come over. But if you say, hey, just come over to the cookout, and she don't know who gonna be over there, the demographics, she ain't coming at all. <laughs> <laughs> she ain't coming at all. But if, but if you tell her, hey. Especially if, like, like if she, like, a lot of these girls, they know me pretty well, and they see the p type of people, the guys and people that I'm around. So they kind of be like, oh, you know, he's around the guys, he's around. They're very interesting. So if I tell them to come, they're gonna come. You know, they're gonna come because they're kind of curious to see who's gonna be over there. You know, so that's how these women, a lot of these women, basically function. Over here, I, and I find that to be very interesting. <laughs> well, well, you know, like what what as far as go, going back to what you were saying, as far as um how to know if your woman is a prize or not, I I, I would have to kind of disagree on the point you make on the fluency of her English because if I'm with a woman, a lot of guys they automatically think well. She's been with too many foreigners. If her English is too good, sometimes people just want to study so that they could better themselves and get a better position. For me, if I want to be in a relationship and I'm trying to build, you know, I can because us out here in the West or you know Western men, we don't mind a hardworking woman. Like we like a hardworking woman, a woman. Yeah. So. If she's working hard on her English and her English is pretty good, then I know that okay, she uh, as, as, and also she has a degree to back it up with her. I know she's gonna get a good position and she can add on and bring something to the table. I think the best way to find out if a woman is a prize or not is depending on some of the questions that you ask. You know, case in point. What are some of the things you like about your own culture? What can I learn from you? If she can't tell you anything about that, if she can't tell you who her favorite Korean actors, actresses, or anything of that nature, or wherever she's from, if she can't tell you that, then she's damn near, you know, she's pretty much no good. If she doesn't know what's on TV or know what's popping in her own ne neck of the woods. Yeah, I think... I mean, there's always exception to the rule, but I just think that um, if the girls, let's say if the Japanese girl in Japan, and she, I'm not saying that just because she speaks English, that makes her not a good pick, or not 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 a. I'm not saying that make her a bad woman, not at all. What I'm saying is, the the majority of the time, the the best women. I've met personally, and the best women I, I still know them to this day. They speak no English. They speak Good. they speak a little a little bit, mm. but it's just enough to get by. But they they don't speak fluent English, and I think as far as the questions, a lot of thing about that. A lot of these women don't really. They don't really funk like do research and they don't study and they don't they don't even know their own history in most cases that is true so so i just think um sometimes uh, you just have to find a girl that's right for you 
in most cases. Yeah. And if she's if she's above the age within their society, over twenty five, or you know, yeah, if she didn't get picked up before twenty five, mm. it could be for multiple reasons. You know, who knows? But yeah. You know, it could be because she's from a, a, a certain type of family. It could be because she just won around a certain group of people. I mean, it could be multiple reasons. But right. that, I'm not going to say that. I'm not saying that's making her a bad um, woman. But, I mean, there's a reason why she didn't get picked up. That, that's all, you know. Then yeah. that, you know? It, it all depends on the questions that you're asking as well. Like, you know, I always ask a woman like, about their exes. I mentioned that before. I always ask a woman about her, her ex. Now, wo- most yeah. women, they're going to lie about how many... <clears throat> I don't ask them how many dudes they smash. Oh, I just no, ask I didn't them. Yeah, I <laughs> ask them about their ex. Now, if, they, if, they're, if they're 26 or whatever, and they're like, yeah, I was with my own... a boyfriend from my community, Asian community, and he, yeah. you know, he was... You know, we were together for like eight years, and even, uh, you know, her English can be good, then I'm like, okay, you know, I, I feel like I don't, I don't mind you having an ex, but if, if you guys were together long term and things just didn't work out, I can rock with that. You know what I'm saying? Because yeah, I, I, yeah. I got an audio message I'm going to play for you right now. I asked this woman about um, her ex or whatever, but this is how I knew this woman wasn't, wasn't a prize. I asked her, what do you do for a living? She says, I, I teach Thai. I teach the Thai language to foreigners. I'm like, oh, boy. So I said, okay, have you ever been with a foreigner? This is the answer she gave me. Oh, I can't even play it. It won't let me play it while I'm on the phone. She okay. she didn't even say, yeah, I've been with foreigners. She just started naming off countries. She said Switzerland, Sweden, Germany, Italy, uh, Spain. <laughs> I'm like, goddamn. You know, I, I didn't – she didn't hear from me after that. <laughs> She said, hey, what what time are we going to meet tomorrow? Uh, <laughs> she was ready to resp- go, buddy. Yeah, she didn't get a response back. She was fine as hell. But it's like, I'm glad I'm glad she was honest because that yeah. lets me know, okay, you're letting me know who you really are, you know. And <laughs> sometimes you just got to ask questions. Like if there's. Yeah, you have to ask questions. Yeah. Right, right. Now, now moving on, these women that are saying, okay, you know, I choose to be single, I'm this, I'm that. Out in Korea, they got bachus ladies. I think I'm pronouncing this right. These are old geriatric women that are prostitutes out there. You know, the grizzly shit, the, the, the grizzly yeah. hoeing. And yeah. I remember, you know, when I went to Korea, I've been to Korea like four times. And I noticed, you know, throughout the day there. I'm like, God damn, there's a lot of old people out here, like extremely old people everywhere. And I didn't know that 50% of the elderly in Korea were homeless. I didn't know they had a poverty issue like that over there, you know, until I did some research. Yeah, it just doesn't, it's just the neighborhoods just don't look like it. That's the thing. Right. But it's low, it's low income, it's low income in Japan too. Well, now nah, the, the neighborhoods, the, the neighborhoods, it's kind of, it it, it kind of does look like, yeah, it kind of does look like it. It's like they got they got projects in Japan, but yeah. it doesn't look it doesn't look if I'm gonna put it like this, it doesn't look exactly the way it does in America. Yeah, but it's a safe if you hood. look at if you <laughs> if you look at it real good, the air conditioning hanging out the window, the same as in America, the uh. They they got too much clothes hanging outside. I said, "Oh yeah, it's probably right there." <laughs> oh come <Yeah>. on, man. <laughs> yeah, and then and if you drive past the building, you know the buildings they on on top of each other. You know it doesn't look like apartment complexes or townhouses or high rises. It looks like it's government. It looked like a government old building. So I'm like, "Oh, that's project right there." And then I say, "Am I right or wrong?" And she said, "You're right, exactly." You know, so, so people, <laughs> people with money they don't like to air dry their clothes. Uh, because because there, there there's no dryers. No. There's no people, dryers. If they got money, 
<laughs> if they got money, they're gonna buy a dryer. Uh, if they got, I, if they can afford to buy it, they'll I, they'll get the dryer. I, I never saw a dryer in China. I'm like, do you guys never? have dryers? No, I never seen one. Damn. I, I was asking about. It, I was looking it up. I could not find one. Maybe I wasn't looking too hard, but I'm like, I yeah. want to dry my clothes out here. Like you know, it's PM. it's expensive. Yeah. In Japan, it's expensive. Like washer and dryer. And air conditioning, that, that stuff is expensive. But if people can afford to get it, they'll get it. Yeah, and, that, and that's another thing. You make you bring up a good point. Like, some of the neighborhoods in Korea, they'll fool you. Yeah, because it, that's it's what just I'm like, saying. It's just like Canada. They don't, they don't tear down buildings and rebuild to make the neighborhood look new, you know, to make it no, they don't. upscale. They just do renovations. But in Korea, I noticed they don't. They don't really do renovations like that, you know. No, they just try they to, don't. they just try to take care of everything, you know. It's just yeah, it's like <laughs> in, in Japan, if they have to um, stop abandoning the building for some reason, they'll just leave it there. It'll just stay there. Yeah, and uh, vacant. You know what I'm saying? But the but they'll still take care of the yard work, the grass, and all that stuff around it, though. But there ain't gonna be nobody in there. I, I thought that was kind of weird. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. So you got in these small. This this happens in small towns mostly outside of Tokyo, the Tokyo area. This happens outside of the small towns. Is like like where the low income people be at, or the small the the, in the suburbs. If you're on the train, this is where you see the projects at, in the low income homes, and and then a lot of these girls get on the train. And I'm like, yeah, she's low income, boy. Yeah, it's, it's struggling out here. You know, I, I can just tell the struggle. You know, it's like the foot. Look at the foot. Look at the way they dress. Oh yeah, she's struggling, boy. But them yeah. damn kids. Yeah. You know. Yeah, it's, it's easy. See, in Thailand, it's easy to spot the struggle out here. It's, <laughs> yeah. It's, it's, it's it too, is. It's too easy to spot the struggle out here. All you gotta ask a woman, I'm like, you know, wh where you live at. If she says she lived by the airport, oh man, she's she's struggling. She don't even have air conditioning in her crib. She's sweating. That's why she always want to be at your place. Yeah, you know. Yeah, the airport <clears throat> is always in an area where it's like it's the struggle area. All it's yeah. all, I'm almost all airports is like that. What, what I never understood that. What's that about? <laughs> Anyway, I don't, I don't know. Man, that's just, just maybe that's just me. <laughs> yeah, yeah. But every yeah. every airport I've ever been to, worldwide, it's it's never in a upscale neighborhood or a a a, 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 a area where it's like, you know, prosperity. It's always in an area where it's like broken down. You know, the best thing in the in the area is the airport. <laughs> 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 yeah, they're trying to keep What's your ass awake. That? They're trying to keep your ass awake. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So, so, and, but in Japan, it's kind of hard to spot the struggle. You know, it's yeah, kind of hard. Yeah. You got to really, you got to really, you got to know what to look for. You know, if you get on the train, look at her feet. Her feet, hands, they can fool you with the clothes. But the feet and the hands and uh, the hair. <laughs> that that's the feet gonna tell you everything. The feet, the hands, and she can kind of fool you with the dressing because you know they wear office clothes to work. And but I, but if you see her outside of work, you're like, oh yeah, she's struggling, boy. You know. And yeah, then, yeah. And, and, and as far as telling you where they live at, they can still fool you with that too, because yeah. you know all these towns are built different. You got little mini towns. And you got the big towns, and then you got the really big towns. So that's how Japan is set up. And then you got yeah. the suburbs. So, you know. Yeah, and, but see, when you go, home, but when you go home with her, oh boy, you really gonna know. <laughs> <laughs> you, you see, out, out here, out here, like it's a little bit different because everybody got dirty shoes out here. So when you look at their feet. And they wore wore out, blew out. You know, the soul yeah. is speaking while they're walking. I mean, yeah. women, pe people with money got dirty shoes out here. You know, so yeah. it's it's kind of hard to tell. But if you ask them, I'm like, okay, 
what condo do you live in? If they say Lumpini, you know, or if they say Supply City Resort, then it's like, oh, okay, you, you live in a good place. If they say IDO, then it's like, oh, okay, okay. You know, this, this chick, you know, she got her shit together. But if they say some okay. shit you've never heard before, and then you're like, hey, you know, let me, um, you know, <laughs> what's, your, what's your Instagram? What's your Facebook? You know, if they got the mattress on the flow, <laughs> then, oh yeah. Then yeah. Yeah. So so that's interesting. A lot of girls in Thailand they had they on Instagram. They're on Facebook. Everybody got Facebook. Facebook. Out here. Oh. Like they, well they see in Japan me. see in Japan a lot of people are not on Facebook and a lot of people are not on Instagram. Mm. Very few. They, 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 the one thing about Japan, they're not they don't utilize the internet like they do anywhere else. It's not even I'm talking a lot, and it's not even at fifty percent. Mm. You know, it's a lot of people are just not on the internet. They, 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 you know, they have the um, apps that they use, but they're not fans of Facebook, uh, LinkedIn. Um, uh, very few people are on YouTube. You know, it's like this. I'm talking like. You know how we make transactions like online and send money and all that stuff? They don't do yeah. any of that stuff over there. They don't yeah. do any of that stuff. That yeah, stuff is of, like foreign to them. Yeah, some of that shit is kind of old school out here. See, everybody's on Facebook. You know, everybody uses line messenger, but like some of that shit is it's catching up though. You know, like mostly yeah. all my bills I got to pay it at the bank. I'm like, fuck, like I don't yeah, get up see that's just that's that see, see that's Japan. They yeah. they pretty much old school. You gotta you go to the ATM, you, you you take out money, you you borrow money from the ATM. You can do that too in Japan. You know you can um you know you go to the bank if you have to. You you pay your bill um at the ATM. You you yeah. you know but you don't pay anything online almost nothing yeah you know, nothing that i can think of you i know, noticed really. that out here you know like <clears throat> but most of these women man it's like you can see pretty much how they live in based on their facebook because they, they all they do is just post pictures post pictures post pictures and yeah you can tell how they live in like if they post a place you know where they're at you know, like if the lights always dim and their selfies at home and they sweating, you know, she's not living right, <laughs> you know, because yeah. she has no AC. And then yeah. like, I always ask a woman's like, you know, I always ask how much she's, she's making. And I just say, oh, you know, it's just for like research purposes, you know, because, you know, I'm always curious to see like people's living conditions over here. If they say, you know, if they're saying like ten thousand bot, twelve thousand bot, fourteen thousand bot. Then yeah, they're struggling. Yeah, how much is that? In, in, like as far as equivalent to uh, U.S. dollars. All right. Well, a lot of everybody thinks like Thailand is just real cheap. Like, oh man, Thailand's cheap. Now it's cheaper than the West, but it's not as cheap as you think it is because you know they're always building new condominiums. They're building. Um, new train lines and stuff like that. So ten thousand baht. If a woman says, you know, I make ten thousand baht, she's only making three hundred and twenty dollars a month. Now, to okay. somebody that thinks, okay, it's cheap over here, and ties, they get, they might get a quote unquote tie discount. You know, oh, foreigners, they get a foreign discount. Ties, they get a tie tie discount. No, they don't. It's all the same out here. And yeah, three hundred twenty dollars. You know, she has to make that last throughout the month. So you rarely see her getting on the train. You know, she's taking a bus. She's living somewhere out in the cut. And even when you when you go out uh, on a date with a woman like that, and you know it's like, okay, she really can't afford to be going out and eating all the time. She'll pay for everything anyways to prove like, hey, I'm not a poor, helpless Thai woman like you think I am. A lot of Thai women do that. You know they can't afford, you know, you always say, okay, let's meet up on Wednesday, eat out. Let's see each other again on Saturday. Let's see each other again on Monday. And 
you know, they, they can't, you know, they can't afford it, but they insist on paying for everything. So, okay. Yeah. That's pride. I got, they still have pride. <clears throat> exactly. So let's yeah. move on, man. Like, uh, Issa Rae. Okay. Issa oh, Rae. Boy. She wrote a book <laughs> years ago, but it just, um, I don't know. It started trending recently. I, I don't know how, yeah. why or how, but she wrote on a book and I'm going to read it right now. Um, <clears throat> Instead, the plight of Asian men is nearly the same as that of black women, except for the fact that their women tend to marry white or other far more often. In fact, Asian Americans have the highest rate of intermarriage. Asian men, your reputation sucks too. This is why I propose that black women and Asian men join forces in love, marriage, and procreation. Educated black women, what better intellectual match for you than an Asian man? And I'm not talking about Filipinos. They're like the blacks of Asians. I'm talking Chinese, Vietnamese, Japanese, etc. Oh, man. I mean, I, I could go on and on and break this shit down. But what's your opinion on that? I think um, I think she just wrote what she wanted in her book from her perspective. She, um, based on her experience... And like I, I said this many times, a lot of these women that come over here from other countries, they have a different mindset, a, a lot of them. So, you know, I think she said what she said based on her experience, how she's living, where. I don't even know where she live at. I guess she live in Hollywood somewhere. You know, she said what she said. That's her opinion. That's fine. I disagree with it. This is not factual, but if that's how she feels... Knock yourself out, Issa. <laughs> I feel know? the same way. I mean, I, I feel like, you know, everybody's, you know, entitled to their own opinion. But I see a lot of women that come out here in Asia, black women that come out here in Asia. And, of course, I mean, there's nothing wrong with you dating anybody who you want to date. But to have to, you know, kind of shit on brothers as if you can't find – another black man that's intellectually that can intellectually match wits with you is like to insult us and then say something is better that's like a huge slap in the face and that's totally wrong yeah yeah if you have to um insult a group of men to uh justify why you should go and date other groups of men well, there's already, you know, there's something, there's something wrong with something wrong with you. You know, you're insecure about something, and that's you know that's the name of her show. So <laughs> that tells you a lot there. <laughs> so I just think that's kind of. I'm not surprised. I've heard this many times. I've, there's a lot of women out here that think just like her with that same mindset. Right. So right. you know, it's like like I always say, just because these women come from i don't even know where she came from so i don't know what country exactly but i know she wasn't born and raised here you know maybe she, she uh i don't think so i think she's from, from some from the continent of africa from one of those countries over there but you know i think that's where her family um came from along with her but you know i mean there's a lot of these women that i've met personally that they're opportunists they they don't see things the way I see it and the way you see it. So they, if the opportunity is right, I mean, they'll take the plunge uh, with any guy. It doesn't necessarily, they don't necessarily have any standards or any um, pride or, or really, they don't really function like that. They think, they see the opportunity, they'll be like, oh, I'm taking it regardless of who the guy is or what he's about. They don't care about any of that. You know, they don't, you know, that's just, so they, they kind of like, because if you really look at the statement, what she said, you know, it's, it's kind of like she's kind of being opportunist. Like, you know, we're, we're not in demand. Asian guys not in demand and black women are not really in demand. So why don't we just get together or whatever? You know, so it's, so it's that opportunist mindset that a lot of women have over here, you know, 
and there's millions of women out there that's like that, but a lot of women probably won't, a lot of black women probably won't take the leap because of the consequences and they don't, um, they're afraid what their friends or family might say, you know. Now her father, her father's from Senegal and her mother's from Louisiana, but she was born and raised in America. Um, my thing is like, not only did, not, I mean, she kind of took a shot at black men as a, I mean, black people as a whole, because she said, I'm not talking about Filipinos. They're like the blacks of Asians. You, you see what I'm saying? It's like, yeah. now yeah. you're not only like you're insulting yourself, <laughs> you know, you went as far That's as a, insult yourself to say, Hey, don't mess with them. They're at the, they're, they're nothing. They're like us. They're like they're yeah. nothing, just like us. Like we're we're nothing, also like them. So why don't you get something better? And I mean to tell y'all, man, I I've lived in China. You know, I, I like the thing is, you know, I don't I don't want to throw shade at anybody for who they are. But when I went over there, man, even out here, a lot of people aren't as smart as y'all think they are. It's just the people that you know, that actually make it to America, that's a struggle. Like, that's why a lot of people think they're smart, but the thing is, it's repetition. They teach their children, you know, college-grade math or university-grade math at a very young age, not because, you know, they're so much smarter. It's just because, like, hey, we need our family to get over to America, and you are the, you know, the cash cow. So yeah. your uncles, your aunts, you know, both grandparents on both sides and the extended family, we're pulling our money together to invest into you so we can go over there. So you're going to learn this shit whether you exactly. like it or not. It's like they don't have money like, you know, people think they are. They're not just, you know. Just pooling it, money together. Right. It's not like it's, it's osmosis that they're just smarter than everybody else. No, it's based on repetition. So. Yeah. And I see so many times black women coming over here and you listen to their stories about, okay, so what was the last person you dated over here? And my, mind you, a lot, of, a lot of black women that I met over here, they've, while they are dating or trying to chase after Asian men, which is nothing wrong, they still are shitting on brothers while they're doing it, which is something that I have a problem with. And you ask them, yeah. okay, what, what, is, what is your... A dating experience with Asian men. He's like, okay, you know, my last dude, it only lasted, lasted two months. Uh, he comes from a single mother household and he didn't graduate from high school. So now you wrote a whole book talking about, well, why don't you get somebody that intellectually matches with somebody like you, but the men who are intellectually inclined, they don't want to get with you. They want to get with their own. Uh, <laughs> Yeah, I mean, most the the reality is most most of us we prefer to be with our own. That's just reality. That's and that makes sense. If you grew up around people that look like you, you're going to be conditioned to be with that type of person. Basically, if you how your mama look is what you usually want. That's just common. That's there's nothing wrong with that, you know. But it, it. like it's just a lot of self hate, hating people that's going on around here, man. It's just there's something wrong with some people. <laughs> I mean, in the whole book, I haven't read the book, so I can't I say what's in it. But if if the book, more than likely, the book is any it's probably, it's more, it's probably gonna be somewhere in between some of the, some of the comments that that was put out there in the mainstream media. You know, it's like, it's just I think like that's a, a huge myth. Think... I think that's a huge myth that women, black women think like black men don't find them desirable. Like that's, that's a huge yeah. myth. Yeah, it is. A myth. That's like something that was put out in the media. I don't see that when I'm out and about and I'm, I'm everywhere uh, in America. Yeah. And even overseas, and even other countries, I don't see that. I see a lot of now. There's a certain percentage of women that just don't want anything to do with a guy. Period. 
I just mm-hmm. don't want anything to do with a with a, a black male, period. But those numbers are very small. You know, and then there's some women that just some guys just don't want to be around them because they're hard to get along with for whatever reason. Maybe they, something happened to them when they were younger. You know, who knows? You know, but that's not the majority of, of black women. That, that's the thing. You know what I mean? Yeah. I mean, I don't really have. I mean, like, I don't really have problems with black women. Never have, really. You know, have I have bad experiences? Yeah, but it's not anything different from any other groups of women I've encountered. I mean, as a matter of fact, I, I said this in a previous uh, video. I, my worst experiences have happened with women outside of the United States. Those mm. are my worst experiences. You know? Yeah. And I think, And I think that's because Outside of North and South America, um, the quality of women drops. It's really low. The 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 consciousness of a lot of women, um, it's just something just something's just missing <laughs> in these yeah, other in these other countries. I mean, I haven't been to uh, to Africa yet, so I, I can't really say. But as far as I'm talking about, I'm talking about Asia, Australia, um, uh, where else? Like um, the islands, you know, like outside of Australia, the, you know, um, I put Hawaii in there, you know, and in these places, in the Middle East, you know, Dubai, Bahrain, I've met women all in the, across all these places. Hong Kong. The quality of women in these places are not up to par versus being here in the United States of America. North and South America. You know, there's it's just something it's just something different about I've women said, in these places. I've said that same thing many, many times the brothers would they tell me, hell no, you don't know what you're talking about, American women, yada, yada, yada. I'm like, no. I always say, man, I'm like, have you ever traveled outside of the town that you're in? And they're like, no. So I'm like, you can't say that about American women if you've never been around America. You've only yeah. been, if you, you know, within like if, a 20-mile radius from where you were born at, you know? Yeah, I mean, if you... If well, if you haven't traveled, this it's really hard to make a judgment like that, you know. So you know, but but I think I've met women from South America, and North America, and I think this is my opinion. It, it, it's the best women here. It, the best women are here, really. If you if you can't talk, if you having problems with women in, from North and South America, you're and you try to go elsewhere. You're going to 10x your problems. 10x yeah. your problems. Because I'm gonna tell you right now, like most women out here, especially like in Thailand, a lot of these women like they don't they don't talk about nothing. They don't know how to have a decent conversation with you. You know, like yeah, you could be bringing them up to your speed. They just and it has nothing to do with a language barrier, like. No, nope, a lot of these women they, they speak English. It's just their mind is gone. <laughs> yeah, know, like yeah. So the thing, a lot of these other groups of women, they don't understand the concept of dating. You you can't have a. It, it's very difficult to have an intellectual conversation with a lot of these women. You know, I think. Um. There's always exceptions to the rule. I'm not saying it's everybody, but you know, I, I've met women from uh, the Philippines. I, I could do that, you know, because it's like, and and that's another thing. It's something about certain groups of women. Let's say a woman from the, from the Philippines and a woman from Vietnamese. I don't know what it is, but I'm telling you, every time I've met a woman from uh, she don't necessarily got to be from Vietnam. 
She could be been born and raised born and raised here in America. Or if I meet a woman that from from the Philippines, or even if she was born and raised here, I'm telling you, every time I've met these two groups of women, the conversation is so smooth, man. It's like we known each other all our lives. <laughs> I don't know why that is. You know, but I'm talking when I compare these two groups of women to the Japanese, Chinese, uh, well, the Indian women, they, they're pretty cool too. But it's kind of effy. It's kind of effy. It's a little any East Indian women. It's kind of like, yeah, it's kind of like you really don't know what you're going to get with them sometimes, you know, but, but, and, it, it's like I don't know what it is. I don't know why the conversation is so smooth, but it's it's usually a different type of vibe with these two groups of women, you know. And other people have said the same thing, so I'm not just making this up. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Nah, I, I've had I've had some good conversation with Filipino women. Like, uh, I, I know two Filipino women out here. They were pretty cool. You know, uh, Vietnamese. I know a Vietnamese chick over here. Like I remember, I went on on this uh, this little camp like two years ago, and uh, there was like a whole Vietnamese group that came along with this camp, and they were they were pretty friendly. They were pretty nice. The thing is, like yeah. uh, East Indian women, I was around them in uh, in Canada. I remember I went on a date with an East Indian woman. I had to leave her ass stranded. I mean, I, I mean. Cause I picked her up. Yeah, yeah. I mean, maybe it was just her. Yeah. But yeah, you don't know uh, what you're gonna get with them. You don't know. Yeah. You just never know. She looked you know, at cause, cause you know I got a tattoo on my arm. She looked uh -huh. at it. She was like, "Oh, that's so stupid. Why would you get that?" I'm like, "Oh I'm like, boy." I'm, I'm like, "Hold on. Like, does this broad know that she came in my car? <laughs> like, and yeah. we're pretty far from her house." Yeah. Like, yeah. See, I I don't I don't play that. I will leave you. I will leave you stranded. I've done it many times. <laughs> hey, you know, I played it all. I'm like, yeah, you know, I, you know, I, you know, I, I don't know. This was years ago. You know, I don't know what I was thinking. I'm like, hold on, let me go to the restroom real quick. I left the yeah. bill. And you know, you she with the bill. Oh, oh, yeah. No. oh yeah, oh yeah, oh yeah. She pissed me off that day. <laughs> okay, I feel this you. was at and this was at Tim Hortons, so you know that was a high ass bill. Yeah, you know, I ordered. You know, I cause I cause I ordered like I ordered some donuts. I ordered a ham and cheese grilled cheese sandwich. I ordered a slushy. She ordered a slushy and a sandwich. I'm, I'm like, oh okay, all right. <laughs> I'm like, hold on, wait a minute. I, I'll be right back. I made yeah. sure I walked that I, down before I left. Yeah, and I done, and I've never seen any of those women ever again that have done that too. Never again. You know, mm -hmm. some it's yeah. some stuff I don't tolerate disrespect at all. Zero. Me neither. Me neither. And that and that's a problem with a lot of brothers out here. Like when you yeah. allow disrespect to come from a woman, and you, you see what you see what goes on is like a lot of brothers are hard headed because they'll listen to somebody like me. They'll tell me you don't know what you're talking about. When I live out here, they say, no, I'll be able to do it. I'll be able to do it. They listen to a lot of idiots on YouTube. And I'm like, okay, fine. Like, I don't, I'm not here to convince you. I'm just here to tell my story. So they go over there and they see it's the total opposite of what they thought it was. So now since they invested all this money over there and they're coming from a place, they're coming from America where they've had no sexual experience with women at all. They get over to Asia and they're like, okay, I'm over here now. Let me make the best of it. I'm living on my own. And I see a lot of men putting up with a lot of, you know, the leftovers of the leftover shit out here. And I'm yeah. like, you're, you're doing yourself a disservice not only to yourself but to other people that look like you because they now they think, okay, all of us are soft, you know. Yeah, man, a lot of, <clears throat> a lot of guys get caught up, man. You know, they – a lot of them feel like they done put so much time and effort to be over there, 
And now they feel like, you know, they don't want to go backwards. They don't want to go come back home or wherever. They don't want to leave. So now they're like, man, I guess I got to tolerate this treatment or maybe she'll come around. You know, it's that a lot of brothers get caught up in that, man. It's unfortunate, but, you know, it happens. Now, now, have you ever put a woman outside of your car? You kicked a woman out your car or dropped her off in the middle of nowhere or put her out on yep. the highway? Have you ever did that? Tell us about that. I mean, um, actually, the, the first time it happened, my, my cousin was driving my car. I was in the back seat, and his girl was in. Well, it wasn't his girlfriend, but it was a girl that he knew, uh, you know, some capacity anyway. They had a little, some type of relationship going on. And she called me a bitch. Mm. You know, um, she was just talking to him, you know, about something they had going on. And I was laughing. And and um, she didn't like the fact that I, that I was laughing, I guess. And she was like, what are you laughing at? <clears throat> you shut the, you know, she's like, yo, you shut the hell up. Oh, you like bitch made this and that. I said, what? Oh. I said, yo, I said, hey, yo, what you call like this is, this is my car. Just I'm sitting in the back, but this is my car. And I said, you can get out. <laughs> That's the first time it happened. Oh, you know, I no, wasn't no, even no, driving. No, hold on, oh, hold on, hold on. But you, you didn't you didn't like slam the brakes and have her head hit the dashboard. And then pull over and actually tell her to get out because you were in well, the backseat. I back did that. The, well, and I did that the second time. Okay. And the second, the second time I was driving, and <clears throat> this girl, I knew her. I knew her for a while, a couple months, and she just, she just kind of went off on me. You know, I guess she, her problem was she didn't like the type of person that I was, because she's like, oh, you like to read books. You like computers, and you like, you know, studying history. So she didn't like the type of person I was. She liked being around me because she liked the people that I was around. But she didn't like the type of person that I was myself. <clears throat> so she, um, I didn't like what she was saying. I kind of took it as an insult. So mm. I was like, if that's the case, if you feel that way about me, why are you even here? Why are you even in here? Why are you even hanging around me, period? I mean, what's about me that, I don't know, tickle your fantasy or whatever? And she was like, well, I just like being around. I said, hey, you can find somebody else, you know, to, to spend your time with. And I said, you can get out right now. <clears throat> <laughs> and I pulled over, and I said, you can get out right now. I'm serious. So she was like, you she like you serious? Yeah. <laughs> and so I said, you know what? I'm gonna help you out. So I got out my side of the car and went to her side of the car, opened the door, and grabbed her by the hand. Take care of yourself. That was it. Mm. Man, I remember one time. You know, it, it, it was a cold, cold, ice cold winter. You know, in Calgary, Alberta, Canada, it was like negative 20 degrees outside, right? So I'm driving on Deerfoot. Like, that's the main highway that runs north and south of Calgary. So, you know, we on our way to go chill somewhere. And, you know, this this chick, you know, I got this Congolese chick. You know, she from the Congo. She's sitting in, in the passenger side. And we just having a conversation, and she she was sounding very coonish. She was like, and then all of a sudden she said, yeah, you know, I, I just think white guys are just better. They're just smarter. They want to build a relationship. You know, they, they want a family. <laughs> you know, I, I don't, you know, brothers, they don't, black men, it's like, oh, you know, white guys are just better. I'm like, what the fuck you doing here for? Exactly. She's like, I mean, I'm here to get to know you. I'm like, you know what? I slowed down because, you know, I couldn't slam the brakes. My my wheels would have locked up and I would have been spinning on that ice on the road. So I eventually slowed down. This was on the highway. By this time, we was on the south side of town. She lived on the north side of town. I was like, get the fuck out of my car. 
She was like, what yeah. the fuck? Like, it, it's it's cold as shit outside. I'm like, I don't give a damn. You in my car. You talking about how people that look like me ain't shit and you black. Okay, so why don't you call somebody who's more intelligent like a white boy and have him pick you up? No, exactly. I'm not getting out. It's cold. It's cold. Man, I <laughs> almost had to drag that woman out the car. <laughs> like... So eventually she got out of my car, freezing cold, negative 20 degrees, and I went back home and I saved my money. No, I just, I just, I ain't got yeah, time for you, women, man. You, you like, can't tolerate, you can't tolerate that type of disrespect. You can't. You know, it's like you can't, and it's in your best interest not to put yourself in a position that has you vulnerable, where you have to tolerate disrespect that's where a lot of guys get caught up you know they'll go to these other countries they have jobs or and you know they'll eventually move in with a woman which is a not that's the first mistake never move in with a woman that's yeah. that's that's a you know i mean some guys they just put themselves in situations i'm like hey man don't don't do that man you know, if, if you're gonna move in with a woman, move in, move in together in a different uh, y'all y'all spot together. Don't don't move in with her and she's been living there forever. Don't do it. You know, <clears throat> as soon as things, as soon as y'all get in an argument, she's gonna be looking for you to leave. <laughs> yep. <laughs> you know, yeah, I mean, and 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 sometimes that goes beyond. You know testing your boundaries some women they just want to be disrespectful because they've been around so many simps that you know okay you know because you know by nature women are rebellious by nature like i'm not religious or anything but that's what the book of genesis was talking about in the beginning with adam yeah. and Eve. the first relationship in the in the bible showed how rebellious women are you know you got to check yeah. some of these women and it's not to be disrespectful saying put them in their place. They want a man to put them in their place. They want to see how you are. Because if a woman can see like, damn, I said this and he allowed me to do it. Well, shit, I'm going to take this shit even further. I'm going to turn up. Yeah. I'm going to take it to I level think, three now. I think some women do want to be checked. But I think some of them don't. Yeah. Asian some women don't. Want <laughs> yeah, I think I think some of these women, the, the ones that don't usually s s look at you, they'll say you, you're an asshole, or you're you're this, you're that. They complain a lot or whatever. But check this out: when they go to that job that they hate, oh, they're very submissive there. <laughs> they they hate the boss so much, but hey, they show up work five six days a week. So, so I always use that illustration for a lot of guys. I said, why does your woman go to work and she's very submissive to that boss, the supervisor that she has? I mean, she said good morning and good afternoon and have a nice weekend. But boy, when she come home to you, boy, it's like she turned into a different monster. So why not you? Why can't you get the same respect from her? Why she can't Show some decency and show some pride when she comes home to you. I always I use that illustration to a lot of guys. I said, "What? What's up with that? Why not you? You're not worth it. If that, if if you say you're not, you, if you don't think you're worth it, well, continue on doing whatever you're doing, tolerating disrespect. But if you think you're worth it, if you think you deserve, like." some respect or the same respect or the similar respect as she as she gives the boss at the job, you better let her go. Plan to let her go. <laughs> you know? If, if 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 a woman can be that disrespectful towards you, then she knows that she already knows that you're weak. It's not that she suspects that you are. It's not that she's testing her boundaries. She knows you're weak. See, in America, you can yeah. check a woman. In, in America, she could you could check a woman and she'll apologize later. Like, hey, I was tripping. That's the beauty of American women. You know, you can't do that out here in Asia because they don't 
know what testing your boundaries is. They're not trying to test your boundaries. They're trying to do whatever the hell they want to do because yeah. they know there's a lot of suckers coming over to Asia and it's like, hey, I'm going to do whatever I want to do and if I can't do it with you, I'll just do it with somebody else. Exactly. You know, I remember I had a, I had a Philip, I, I even recorded this. I should put this video out there on YouTube, but I had this Filipino, find your Filipino chick uh, come to my crib and you know, you know, when players, you know, I'm not a dirty person, but when players have a young lady coming over, you know, we get to cleaning. You know what yeah. I'm saying? Like, we want it to smell good. We get to clean it. So she comes over and she starts criticizing my place. I'm like, oh, it's not organized. It's not this. It's not that. She starts talking a lot of shit. And I'm like, you know, in my mind, I'm like, it's not even the place. I think she's trying to put me down because, you know, I have, she she lived by the airport. <laughs> you dig okay. what I'm saying? I live downtown. So, you know, I, I think in her mind, it's like, I want to feel better about myself because this black person has, is doing better than me. And I wasn't thinking like that. Oh, but I yeah. Thought, I think she was yeah. thinking like that. So Yeah, there's a lot of that. There's a lot of that going on. Right. So she took it to the next level. I said, get the fuck out. You know, I'm, I'm sick of your yeah. shit. You're disrespectful. You're rude. You know, here you're coming yeah. up. I allowed you to come to my place. I'm allowing, I wanted you to spend the night and as we agreed, but now you're disrespectful and you talking crazy about my place. You don't even have air conditioning. You at, you at home sweating at night. You know, you got the air open. Yeah. I know the mosquitoes, because there's a gang of mosquitoes at night. So I'm like, you can go back to your crib. And she refused to leave. You know what I'm saying? So I didn't know how to handle that, you know, because, you know, in America, I'll just grab a woman and throw her out, you know, like, a, like a, you know, a, you know, like Fresh Prince of Bel-Air. Yeah. <laughs> but, but the thing is, with, <laughs> with, 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 with her, you know, I just started recording and I'm like, hey, this woman, she's at my crib. This is her name. She won't leave. I asked her to leave. She won't leave. Then she started jumping on me. You know what I'm saying? She oh, jumped really? On, oh. Yeah, yeah. She jumped on my back. I got this recorded. Then she, you know, she reached around and started squeezing the shit, of my, shit out of my balls. Like, I mean, that oh, shit, shit. Like, I was in pain. And she's a wild, she's a wild one. Yeah, and, and the only thing I could think of saying was, I'm about to call immigration. Because, you know, she's a Filipino chick living over here because she know the struggle she come from in the Philippines. Yeah. So, how, so, so how old was she? She probably, She's a young girl. Got to be. At the time, she was 29. Jesus. Okay. At the time, she was yeah. 29. So she's a wild girl. I said, you know, I'm about to call him immigration. That's what made us. Sh- that's what made us stop. And, you know, she started, I mean, ain't, ain't nothing faster than a pume. You know, she went. She pew, she, yeah, she didn't even. She didn't even take the eleva- elevator. She took the stairs. Wow, and she, that's how you scared know, she, she was. Yeah, she ran on home. Like I mean, she had but a see, legit job and everything in Thailand, but exactly, you know. and that's very important because she, she reason why she reacted like that because she knows immigration. <clears throat> Somebody in immigration got the power to get her ass up out of there. Exactly. See, that's she respects immigration. <laughs> Because <laughs> because Filipinos they they're treated like shit out here, you exactly. know. Because you know, like 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 what Issa Rae said, they're the blacks of Asians. Like they're at the bottom of the totem pole. A lot of people don't even want them out here. No, they don't. See, see, so that brings uh, that brings me to my point. See, a lot of women don't. The only thing this is a lot of people, especially these women. People from these other countries, outside of South and North and South America, especially these other, I'm talking just people now. These other groups of people outside of America, North and South, the only thing they respect is aggression and fear. <laughs> you, you cannot talk to a lot of these people. You cannot work nothing out with a lot of people, a lot of women. You cannot sit and have a, like a, you know, intellectual conversation and y'all come up. What a win-win solution. They don't understand that in most cases. You got to tell them. You can't ask them. You got to tell them, hey, this is how it's going to go. You know? And if you, you know, this, if you don't, 
if you just you can agree to disagree, but if you disagree, you have to leave. Exactly, man. It, it's yeah. So when I when I said when I said immigration, she took a beeline right downstairs, and I, I'm like, yeah. you know, and I've been in dozens of situations out here where I, I just had to get up and leave. Like it, it's you know, women showing up late, you know, hours late, or they thought like when I agree upon a time, you know, two p.m. or whatever. I'll, I'll wait within the hour because of traffic out here. You know, if, yeah. If by three o'clock, if you're not there, and you're telling me, "Oh, I'm about to take a shower," or "I'm just leaving now at three, I'm like, "Bitch, just stay at home." You know, j- just stay yeah. at home. <laughs> well, <laughs> like when when I mean, in these big cities, man, there's so much going on. So when it, it comes to meeting somebody. You know, it's like, it's easy to get stood up. It's kind of easy. You know, so what What I do to prevent that, man, is I, I, I tell them, meet me someplace close to where I live at. Yeah. So that way, you know, I don't have to really go out of my way. If you don't show up, hey, it's all good. I was going to be here anyway. <laughs> and I, I, yeah. I, usually go, I usually go to a spot where I usually go anyway. I go to like a bar, local bar. So I'm gonna be here regardless. You don't gotta show up. If you show up, it's all good. But if you don't right. show up, I'm gonna be here anyway, kicking it. You know. <laughs> so that's how. That's what I do. To, you know, I want. I don't gotta disappoint myself. I don't gotta go out of my way. I don't gotta drive 45 minutes across town. No, I'm driving 10 minutes down the street. You, you want to see me? You come over here where I'm at. You know, that's what it is. You know what, man, is like, there was another time I had to leave a woman with the bill. I had to leave a Chinese woman with the bill one time in Beijing. Because some of these women, like, they were, you know, not only will they cross the boundaries, you know, just being rude, some of them get racist. You know, some yeah. of them will bring up racial shit. Like, this one what, shit. What? They'll say, like, what? Now, this one chick, she was like, I'm talking to her, and first of all, like she started like kind of talking slick because I was American. Uh-huh. I'm like, okay, well, why well, the fuck you here? You know, like, oh, you're Americans, you have no sense of fashion. That's why I went to school in the UK. I'm like, uh, you know, I, I don't, I don't like talking to Asian women that come from the UK. Period. Like, I just found out right then and there that she went to school in the UK. I'm like, okay. So then she goes, yeah, and a lot of you blacks out here, you just, you know, a lot of Africans and you blacks just sell drugs out here. And I didn't even bother to argue. You know, I'm well, that, like, that, well, that mentality that came from when she was in the UK, more than likely. Yeah. I mean, that's, I, I, that's I, I, me personally, I don't care where that mentality came from because. I don't care I, either. You know, I told her, I'm like, look, I mean. Because I, I remember, uh, you know, some of these dope dealers, like I, I look up like a documentary of like a lot of these black dope dealers or whatever. They're like, hey, look, you know, a lot of these motherfuckers, man, they always say blacks are a problem. But it's like, you know, yeah, you know, I was in the game or whatever. But he goes, I ain't never seen no black person fly no airplane from I was about to bring that one up. location yeah. to the other. Like I ain't never seen a black person fly no plane, you know, so... I'm like, these brothers out here, along with you guys, you know, I'm like, you guys are the ones cooking it up, supplying it for them, you know. Getting and, used, basically. Right, so I'm like. <laughs> that's what, that's why I would have shut her up right with that. Right. <laughs> I mean, there's so many stories over here where, you know, the feds, um, they had to intercept like a, um, I remember one time they they had like a huge shipment coming in. It was of meth, because a lot of the, the, the drug of choice out here is meth. It was like over okay. five hundred five hundred million dollars worth of meth being shipped over to Australia from China. I'm like, that's you. That ain't us. That's you. <laughs> that is you. So I'm well, eating she... my I'm eating my fries. I, I I drink you know because when I know the 
the date is going south, that's when I start wolfing down more because I'm about to be like, hey, hey, hey <laughs> hold, on, hold on real quick. <laughs> I need to go to the restroom. I went straight to the club after that. <laughs> but you know, a lot of these, she doesn't, she didn't know what she was talking about anyway. So it's like, I mean, I mean you, 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 you're talking to a brick wall. She don't know anything about it. Most women, let's just be honest. Most women don't know nothing about what happens in the streets. They don't know. They just say what they see on television or what somebody told them. They don't know. Now, but when a, when somebody's being racist towards you, even though it, it, they bring up the dumbest, convoluted, you know, statistics ever, they know it's not real. You know, the the whole purpose is to get a reaction out of you or to put you down. So. The problem with it is, is most black folks think that they actually believe it when, and then they start arguing with them when it, it's just oh, no. a waste of time. They're just there to yeah, waste you don't time. Argue. No, yeah, you don't argue. No, I don't. I, by the time, I usually just ask them, a, ask them one or two questions, and that'll shut them up. They won't have anything else left to say after that. <laughs> yeah. That's I'm, it. I'm a, I'm, I remember a, a, another Chinese woman um, she wanted to meet at this location at some mall that I'd never been to before. And it was the weirdest shit ever how the train stations were set up. She was like, meet me at this exit or whatever. And, you know, like a train station, usually it's at a, you know, like exit one, exit two, exit three, exit four. They're not far apart from each other. It's just at one intersection, one small intersection. So if you got to go across to exit two, it might take a while, but it, it it don't. It might take a minute, right? This one was yeah. at a at a major, major, huge intersection in Beijing, and I got confused, and it took me a while to get to her because that's the thing about in China. Chinese people give the worst directions ever, you know. Like they they don't <laughs> like a lot of people in Asia. They don't have a sense of directions. They don't know what north, south, east, west is. They just say, "Hey, meet here and look for a tall building." That's all they say. And they'll uh, say take exit take exit one oh two. Yeah, they'll say exit <laughs> one. And you're trying to figure out how to get to exit because this was like the biggest intersection in Beijing. So just to go to <laughs> the other intersection, it takes minutes to get there. So yeah. by the time I get there, she you know, she's you know, yapping off out the mouth. I'm out of breath. Talking about, oh, you late, blah, 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 blah. I'm like, hey, hey, I'm like, hey, look. Don't get me started because you motherfuckers out here don't know, don't have a sense of direction. So, yeah, we argued for a little bit. We, you know, we moved on. And this Chinese woman, she was built like a sister. Like uh, the way she really? was looking. Oh yeah, oh yeah. She had the ass. <laughs> she had the titties. She had the legs. I mean, I, nice. I, I honestly didn't even want to argue with her. You know, I almost <laughs> wanted to start simping. I'm like, hey, you know, my 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 bad. Yeah, that that was me. That's how fine she was. So, you know, so I, I sit down with her. I'm talking with her. I'm asking her questions, and um, uh, you know, she she was like, I don't give a damn about anything about China, Chinese culture. I'm like, okay, that's that's strike why one. Why is that? Yeah, why why is that? Probably because the way she's built, no no Chinese man wants her. Oh, you know, like like, she she wasn't. She just had a big ass. Like she wasn't fat at all. She just had a big ass. But uh, oh, they don't like they don't like guys don't like that now. Yeah, she has some nice titties. So it'll strike one. Then she, I remember, I forgot exactly what she said, but she said something very fucking rude. Just what? that I, I I just couldn't. I'm like y'all already, y'all already was starting shit. You already gave bad directions. You wanted to argue with me when I showed up. You know, I went out my way to come here. You live over here. I don't. Now, you know, you, you're kind of being rude here. <sighs> I'm like, you know, I, I was like, damn, now I don't give a damn if she's fine. So I was like, ah. I was like, hey, hold on. Uh, I need to go to the restroom real quick. <laughs> you know, <laughs> you know <Yeah>. like, <clears throat> you, you, you got to. You 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 guys you know that are out there, you gotta have self respect even if it means being single for a yeah. year, a couple no months. Doubt about it. 
You know, it doesn't yeah. matter. You know, like pussy is easy out here. You know, pussy, you know, out in Thailand, pussy, I mean, you it's can. It's easy yeah. everywhere. <laughs> but, it's but easy especially. everywhere now. <laughs> but but it, but especially out here, I mean, you give a woman ten, eleven dollars out here, and yep. you know, you can get it on and popping, X rated, you know, with ten or eleven dollars out here. But the thing is, I don't know with with brothers, it's like, you know, you know, I, I don't know. It's like it, it think, hurts your I, pride when a I woman is they, being disrespectful. I think a lot of guys. They're just fascinated how the girl look more than it. They're not even thinking about sex. They're just fascinated how the girl look. They, that makes them put the girl on the pedestal. That's what that's what that that's about most of the time. It can't they even do be think about of, looks. They, they, they do think about the sex now, but but initially, it's more how the girl looks more than anything else. Now that's why on, they you put was, on you the was pedestal. Out here, you you was in Japan for four years, right? Yeah. You seen brothers with women, and some of these brothers married the women that they yeah. got with, right? How many yeah. of those dudes that you seen married or with girlfriends, holding hands, kicking cans, that were with dimes, like attractive women? A oh, very few. Very few. Very few. <laughs> Most of these brothers, it, it ain't even a like, because I tell a lot of cats, I'm like, it it can't be about the looks because. You brothers aren't pulling dime pieces out here. Like I remember, I know this guy in Japan. You know he 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 went to jail twice over his wife. In Japan? You know, yeah, yeah. He went to jail Jesus twice. Christ. You know this woman. <laughs> this woman um, made up a lie and said that he put hands on her when he wasn't even at the house. Like they just had an Jeez. argument over the phone. They threw him in jail twice. And wow. I'm like, you know, so he don't know what to do when he called me. And at the time, this guy's like 32 years old. I'm like, hey, man, you know, like, you know, what, yeah. you know, what, what part she, of Japan is she from? How old is she? He was like, well, she's from here. And he told me she was 51. 51? <laughs> yeah. Well, see, oh, he, he was now, 51 that, that, years I, old. Now here's the deal with that. If a woman calls the police on you, she's not afraid of you. Hell, if, if, if she. If she threatens to call the police on you, it's a wrap. Yeah, she's just it's, no fear. It's no fear. See, see now, some I'm gonna say this because it's gonna be controversial. Uh huh. I I believe that a woman has to have a level of fear of you. If not, she'll just do anything. She'll try you, test you all the time. You know. It has to be a certain level of fear. I say, hey, you know, I, 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 I got to think about doing that. I don't know what he might do if I try something like that. If she ain't thinking like that, oh, that's it's just good. anything could happen, you know. Right. You know, right. And some guys, I, gonna, I, I some guys, some, some guys might. I know some guys are gonna disagree with that, you know. But I'm telling you, like some women, just they do not. You know, only thing they respect is. Is aggression <laughs> and fear. <laughs> I'm telling you. I mean, this is a lot of people in general. No, I agree with that. <laughs> I agree with that. If they don't, it's just, if they don't think you're going to do something to them based on their behavior, if they don't think it's going to be some type of consequences, they'll they'll abuse you, treat, mistreat you all day long. That's this is why that's a part of the problem that we have living here in America. This is why we can't get the cops off of us out here. Because there's no consequences. Right. It's like we can go out here and act crazy and beat beat people up and shoot and kill and do all we want. And we can somebody gonna start a Kickstarter campaign and we might lose our job, you know, or we might go through the the court system, and we pop out, and we'll walk free. We won't have no. We can't be a cop no more. Well, we got two hundred thousand dollars on the way out. <laughs> right, right. So that's just. I think it's just human nature, really. I, I could be wrong about that, but I think it's human nature. Yeah, re respect is fear, and vice versa. You know what I'm saying? I'm like, you know, I was telling him, I'm like, dude, you shouldn't even, 
I don't even know why you with a woman twenty years older than you in the first place. Like, well, she's know. too old anyway. That's <laughs> Jesus Christ. What was he thinking? I don't know. He, he you seen it? <laughs> you seen the picture of the woman? <laughs> nah, nah. And that's another thing. A lot, a lot of brothers, you know, they'll, 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 they'll post pictures and videos of them slam dunking women that they done met off Tinder. That that's just a floozy. You know, they, they, they'll, they'll post pictures and videos of a whore, but their girlfriend or their wife, now all of a sudden, nah, nah, I can't, you know, I, I can't introduce you guys to her. You know, I, I can't post pictures of her because, you know, they, you know, that's my girl. Like, that's my wife. No, because she built like Snuffleupagus from Sesame Street. That's why. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Because she's she's twice your age. That's why. Because he was on the the marriage hustle, but I'm like, dude, you have a degree, like. <laughs> yeah, I remember. You know, you remember when I first came, when I first got started my channel online, Guy on Girl TV. I used to post pictures of my girls all the time. Yeah, but people might have thought that it was a picture that I pulled from online somewhere. But no, these were actual girls that I knew that I. I was talking to, and then I still talk to. Yeah, but people look yeah. at the picture, they'd be like, "Oh, I guess it's some picture that he pulled from somewhere." No, these pictures that I took. <laughs> and a lot really, of that's some, a lot of that's some hating shit. You know what I'm saying? A lot of that. That's the type of woman you get when you have self respect. Like, you know, I I may not be in a relationship as often as a simp. You know, a simp would just take anything. Oh yeah, you know, that's true. They'll take anything. A simp will take a woman. You know, a simp will take care of another woman's kids. You know. Yeah, man. That's <laughs> so, oh my goodness. In Asia, man, that's, I'm never, <laughs> I'm never going to do that. You know, I, I, I don't know. I come in. I salute guys that do that. Take care of another man's kids. I mean, um, I only way I can see that happening if, if I have kids and we bring. Two families together with kids. Okay, that, that's cool in the game. But if if I'm single with no kids and you got two kids, uh, why in the world would I consider even doing anything like that? I just, I don't know, man. I, I, I got a buddy that got married to a woman that had two kids, and now they had, got three kids now. So I'm like, this, that's expensive, bro. It takes money. To take care of kids, man. So now he's calling me talking about his money low. Of course, <laughs> it's gonna be low. That's a ready-made family. You had, she had two kids when y'all met. Now you y'all had a kid together. Now you got three. So you have to take care of all three of them now. Yeah, I mean, you think you just gonna have a kid with her and just take care of you? Her, and the kid and, and your only child no. that you have with a no. You know, doesn't doesn't women, work like that. These women, nine times out of ten, the men that they have children by, they don't really try to I mean nine times out of ten, the men that they have kids by ain't shit anyway. You know, and, they don't even, even they don't even want child support from them sometimes. Yeah, <laughs> and even and a lot of times the relationship they have is between the parent is so toxic. And that relationship affects the kids because, right. unfortunately, if the if the if the mom and the dad don't get along, the you know the the the, the dad usually have a little um it's it's just something between if the relationship between the mom and the dad is not good, mm. the dad don't really. He don't have anything against the kids, but the, it, it affects the kids too. I mean, it, it shouldn't yeah. happen yeah. like that, but it, it happens, you know. So the, the best thing you could do if you have a kid with a woman, and if you know y'all just break up or divorce or whatever, best thing for a woman to do is just try to maintain a good relationship with the guy, because if not, it's going to affect the kids. And nine times out of ten, because it's something about that, it's something about the relationship between the man and the woman, and 
into the kids too. There's something about that. I don't know what it is exactly, but I've seen it. You know, seem like if the mom and the dad get along, great. Oh man, the the everybody get along. Kids get along. And they don't necessarily have to be in the same household. But if the mom and the dad get along, the kids will be harmony between the, the dad and the kids and everybody. Let you me know? ask you this. Have you ever dated or dealt with a woman who had a kid? Of course. Okay. <laughs> yeah, of course I have. That's why I, I said I did it one time and I just one time? Come on. Come did one, on I did it one time. I did it one oh. time. Only once, and that's all it took for me to learn. I like this is number one. They don't have a lot of time for you, and the kids is always around. Daytime, nighttime. I mean, you come over, the kids all around, and don't have kids, and the mom let the kids get in the bed with, with her. So, oh man! So, yeah, that... so it's like you want to get in the bed too but then the little boy get in the bed the little girl get in the bed so now all three of y'all are in the bed together so you you ready to get down and dirty with the mom but the kid knocking on the door mama let me in I cannot come in you know so it's that dynamic that usually plays out so hey, some, some of these lames out here it'd be all five of them in the bed yeah so <laughs> I mean, it, it it it's just complicated. It's a very complicated relationship. So, just why a lot of these women know that, um, the the best thing they get that a uh, a single guy can give them in most cases is just sex, because it's like, I mean, unless he has kids already, I mean, it's like, I just don't think it's worth it. As for a single guy with no kids to be in a relationship with a woman with kids because it's like how much time she's going to have for you I mean she's struggling with them kids financially we know that in 90% you know so I mean then you don't know the relationship she had with the kids father most of the time that's toxic because that's why they broke up <laughs> So I'm like, right, man, right, right. I, I, it's just too complicated. I'd rather, after that situation, I said, look, I'm better off just finding a single girl with no kids. There's a lot of them out here. <laughs> yeah, yeah. While I was living in Canada, I did date one woman that had a kid. I said never again. But the thing in Canada is, like, you'll be hard-pressed to find a young woman with no kids. Like, hard -pressed. I'm talking about all races black yeah white you know yeah what I'm a, lot, a lot of people that's how it think, is you know white women they, a lot of people think white people white families like you know their youngest daughters or whatever they don't have kids out of wetlock at a young age in high school no. that's bullshit no. you know yeah not a lot today of, they'll, they'll, no because you know all, a lot of white families they have a they always got like somebody in the family a cousin or somewhere that lives in the boonies that they haven't yeah. talked to in ever. So whenever there's a, reason, a situation, there's reasons for that too. <laughs> right. And whenever a situation comes up where their daughter, the ones that are living in the suburbs, has a child at a wet lot, they send them to the one, you know, to the family in the boonies. Like, hey, hey, cousin, I haven't heard from you in twenty years. Yeah, yeah, whatever. Hey, we're gonna send our daughter over there, you know, yeah, get to that's, know her, that, get acquainted with her. <laughs> yeah. That that used yeah. to happen when I was growing up a lot. Yeah. If the if the the daughter got pregnant up north, they send them down south to stay with the grandmother. Or if the right. or if the daughter got pregnant down south, they send them out west. Right. Oh, that used to yeah. happen. Yeah, but in Canada, you'd be hard pressed to find young women with no kids. Man, everybody got a goddamn kid. But I, what made me not want to take them serious, the women that I was smashing, that had a kid, was how they treated their children you know oh what I'm yeah and i would only yeah. hit that once and i'm like i'm out exactly because i'm like if yeah. you can treat your your flesh and blood like that ain't no telling how you're gonna treat me if if yeah if i'm if i'm if i come over there to smash right well you know i got we got the whole weekend planned out if i come over there to smash 
and your kid is there. You didn't bother to get a babysitter. This is my first time coming over. <coughs> you know what I'm saying? You didn't be like, hey, you know, I can't bring you around my kid, you know, until, you know, I, I really get to know you. I can respect that. But yeah, that's fine. Most, yeah. most mothers in Canada, they don't give a damn. Most no, mothers yeah, in Canada, yeah. they'll they'll leave their their two year old at the crib sleeping while they at the club. Yeah, yeah you know most most women in Canada, I mean, they kind of be they seem to be a little wild. You yeah. know, <laughs> even the ones here where I live, I mean, they kind of, kind of be seem to be a little wild, man. You know, but you know, I have this thing where if I meet a woman and if if she mistreats her kids or if she's a deadbeat. Or even if a guy, if he's a deadbeat, if I find out that they're deadbeat or they mistreat their kids, don't take care of their kids, or they're doing something to the kids that I don't like, I cut them off. You got to go. I don't play that. I don't play that at all. I mean, of course, I'm going to get the pussy first, but then I'm going to cut them off yeah. right after. Yeah, because. Yeah, I usually, don't play that. Especially Canadian women, like, I always tell people, like, Canadians are the most some of the most honest people I've ever been around but sometimes it's yeah honest. some yeah. yeah sometimes I'll be like hey man watch your mouth <laughs> yeah yeah you can't say like, that what's the matter yeah, with you like, <laughs> like, like you, you, they're, they're too honest like you know I remember one time this, this was a I was doing some work up there but they 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 paired me with this guy for training and this was my first time meeting this guy and like you know, two hours into the train, he's telling me about his life story. How he used to, how he used to smoke crack. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's a white dude. I'm like, yeah, I'm like, yeah, God damn. And then he goes, and then later on, like an hour later, he tells me, he goes, man, you know, I, I haven't had sex with a woman in over 13 <laughs> years. <laughs> he's like, yo, that's too much information, brother. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so a lot of Canadian women, they will show you their true cards. The moment early. you meet them, yeah, early. Yeah. So yeah. they will yeah. if they if they mistreat their kids, it's not like American women how they'll get a babysitter the first month to put the best foot forward, then show you who they really are. No, they show you who they really are when you first meet them in Canada. Yeah. It's like that in Australia too. Mm. Like that in Australia too. Yeah, it's like that too. Damn, you've been you know, over what, there? Yeah, I've been to Australia a few times. What's it like yeah, over like, there? It's just like, it's like in the U.S. Basically, same. It just the the land mass is just different, but the uh, yeah. cities and the towns is pretty much the same. It's just a different uh, different vibe and. But as far as know. the women, the women are open, like I, yeah, I very like, outspoken. Like, oh, very okay. outspoken. They don't hide a lot of stuff. They don't, you know, they're not gonna lie. And, you know, they, um, they, as far as history, what I found that was interesting as far as history of what happened in Australia, they don't lie about, they don't hide anything. They'll be like, yeah, a lot of stuff that was, was pretty messed up that happened here back in the day. They don't tell, they'll, they're, they're honest about it. They'll mm -hmm. like, yeah, what happened to the native people here is pretty messed up, you know, you know, and I traveled around there. I, I was hanging out with a lot of the, uh, native people. They still there. You know, mm. but you know, like a lot of some of these countries outside of America, like Canada, countries in Europe and Australia, like how you're explaining it, they all have a lot of people that have similar character traits. I'm pretty sure New Zealand might be the same as well. You know, how people are yeah. just open, and when a lot of brothers when they go to these places, they tend to fall in love with it real quick because they see how open sexually the women are. You know, yeah. The only, and, and the then, only, yeah. Ahead. The only reason why that is, in these other countries, they don't have, they don't have no status quo. Yeah, There's no status quo really. They just have a code of conduct. They say, hey, you know, this is how we do stuff over here. But in America, it's, it's smoke and mirrors over here. That's right, a big right, difference. Right. Yeah. Right, right. You know, it's just. Like there's there's some things you can appreciate about the women in places like in Australia, Canada, 
But yeah, man, like they, they, they like when you first meet them, it's like, hey, I used to do cocaine, I used to be oh, a yeah. prostitute, I used to do this, and it's regular shit that women do in America. Also, it's just like women. They just don't say nothing. America, about it. Yeah, yeah, that you find out yeah. through the streets. <laughs> yeah, you find out by using your instincts. You know, I, I, that I've done that a few times. It's like if you stay around a woman long enough, it's like certain things. You'd be like, okay, she she'll say certain things, and sometimes it might go over your head, right? And later on, probably a few minutes later, I'd be like, oh, well, that's what she meant when she said that. Okay, you know, or she'll say. Uh, I used to do something strange for a piece of change every once in a while or whatever. Mm. And I'd be like, oh, okay. Gotcha. You know. So they'll say, a lot of women, they'll tell you little stuff. But you're going to have to catch on to it. They're not going to come out and tell you directly. Uh, Most women ain't, most, yeah, most women are not going to tell you directly what they done, uh, especially if they feel bad about it. You know, but they'll tell you, you know, yeah, I've done little things I wasn't proud of. I'm not saying I'm perfect or whatever, you know. Well, like in America, most women are opportunists, you know, mm-hmm. because so, you know, if a lot of them, they, you know, they be, they, a lot of them are like renegade hoeing on the, on the weekends. A lot of them do that. Mm-hmm. You know, or, if they, or if they run into the right guy. If the guy, I don't know, make them an offer, whatever the offer is, in exchange for whatever, there's a good chance a lot of women will take it, especially a lot of young girls. They, they'll do it. Like, I gave you a good example. A lot of girls that um got jobs, right? And, you know, they usually hire these young girls. And they get rid of older women, hire the young girls. And let's say if the um manager... Needed someone to go out of town. He'd take the young girl with him. He ain't taking the older woman with him. Take the young girl with him. And he'll say, hey, um, we can stay in the same hotel room when we go out of town. And she'll be like, oh, okay, that's fine. You know. <laughs> and she know what time it is in most cases. You know, now the older woman ain't going to really go for that. And some will, but most of them won't. But the guy, he knows this. The older one, the younger girl, she probably got a baby. She probably don't. She probably want to keep that job, so she feels obligated to do whatever the the boss says. Yeah, you know, especially in this climate, like you know, a lot of people are yeah. struggling for real. For so real. that 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 dynamic happens all the time. I I used right. to see it when I used to be going through the airport. You have an older guy and a young girl, and they'll say, hey, we were just this company. We're on our way to Phoenix, Arizona, or L.A., or wherever. And I'll be like, oh, okay, yeah, your boss. She's like, oh, yeah, that's my boss. We're, you know, we travel together all the time. And I say, oh, it's just you and him all the time? She's like, yeah. So I said, nobody else, just you and him. She's like, yeah. So I said, how many people you, you, y'all work with? About 50 people. But I said, just you and him. She's like, yeah, okay. <laughs> yeah, yeah. You know. <laughs> you see that at every job. Like, I mean, there's it, yeah. always. Somebody's yeah. always fucking the boss at every job. Of course. So it's like <clears throat> some girls walk, come through the door with that mindset. Like, hey, I'm willing to do whatever I got to do to keep my job and get promoted. You know? Yeah, yeah. 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 I, I mean... You know, a lot of women, you know, they tell half truths, and it's like they just leave it kind of open for you to just figure it out on your own. And sometimes yeah. it's not even enough um, evidence, well, not even enough uh, information for you to figure it out on your own. You just like, oh, okay, yeah, yeah. I mean, just no. it's just the well, regular, yeah. the regular True. shit that everybody else says. Yeah, I, I did some things in the past that I'm not proud of. Everybody yeah. can yeah. say that. I mean, you know, but. Yeah. But when you're, yeah. when you're young, you don't know what certain things mean until you get older, until you have enough experience. Mm. That's, that's the thing, because it's been a lot of stuff that was said to me when I was in my 20s, 
And I looked back on it and I was like, oh man, that's what she meant when she said that. <laughs> you know? <laughs> right, right. But that, so, you know, that's, and then a lot of women are afraid to tell a lot of guys stuff too. They're afraid that the guy's going to flip out. And a lot of guys do flip out. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> Especially, so, especially, especially when she's been with a black guy. Oh boy, <laughs> man! See, that's that's the one of the biggest problems in this society is is the double standards and the favoritism. You got one group of guys; they think they can do whatever they want with any woman that they want. But when it's your turn, it's like, oh, wait a minute! You need my permission to be with him. <laughs> is yeah, that yeah. is is that mentality? You know. And for those of y'all that are listening out there, some of these women, especially in Asia, they might not be coming around like that. And it's not really you, per se. It's what will happen if people find out if she's been with a black guy. Like, you guys don't realize how many of these men out here ask these women, how many have you been with a black guy? How many yeah. black yeah. men have you been with? They, that's I, a pop- and, and, and the guy that that's asking the quiz, question, they might hang around. Most of their friends might be black. Yeah, yeah. They that's don't care. a that's a very popular question, based on um, on a lot of women that I know. That's a very popular question that a lot of women get. You know, yeah. and um, that's what that's why these subgroups are so. Are, are starting to be bigger and bigger now. The B, BDSM groups are starting to be so bigger and bigger because you, in these groups, you don't have to, they can be themselves to a certain BDS, extent. BDS, what does BDS mean? BDSM. B- you know, you BDSM? Got a, yeah, you have a lot of these uh, groups where they, you know, you get swinger groups, the you know some of these some some of these you know, women like being kinky like getting all freaky, and they got you know toys, chains, and whips. Oh, and, the freak yeah. nick. Yeah. Well, not freak nick. No, no, not freak nick. No, freak I, nick. I know, I, 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 I know, I know, I know, I know, I know. I'm just, I'm just. This is a play on words. Okay, but okay. I, I know what you're talking about. B, BD, okay, BDSM. Yeah, there's a lot of websites oh. online today. Yeah, 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 yeah. You see, the thing is is these men like I, I noticed that was pretty common in America I never I never really asked that. I, I think only one time a woman told me because uh, I was friends with this woman I wasn't dating her or anything and uh you know her, her baby daddy was black so I asked her I'm like have you ever been on dates with cuz she was you know Latina I'm like, have you uh-huh. ever been on, on, on dates with other Latino men? She said, yes. I'm like, uh, have you been in, like, you know, a relationship or a long-term relationship with a Latino man that you've, you know, been on a date with or seen, you know, been talking to or whatever, knowing that you have a black son? She said, no, it doesn't last after the first date. Why I'm not? Like, really? She goes, the, the moment they find out that my son oh, is okay. half black, it's a wrap. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah, and she yeah, goes, yeah. And she goes, yeah. I don't hide my son or nothing, but she goes, you know, I have my son's picture on the profile. On the wall uh, or something like on, that? Her wallpaper on her, on her phone. Oh, okay. And gotcha. So when the dudes see their phone, he was like, hold on, like, who, who was that? She's like, that's my son. Baby like, looks black. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> the, the father black. She's like... Yeah, she's like the yeah. date is over immediately after they. Fight. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. That's I'm not surprised at all. I've heard this many times. Yeah, there's a lot of insecure guys out here. You know, they um for whatever reason, you know, that's just that's just what it is, man. Right, right. And, and yeah. when I went the hate to is Canada, real. Right, when I went to Canada, that's when I started asking women. I'm like. Like that East Indian chick that I, you know, you know, I had to leave her with the bill. Yeah. <laughs> she she was telling me how uh, East Indian men ask her all the time, "Have you ever been with a black guy?" Oh yeah. She was like, they, they, they all asked me that. Oh yeah. They um um 
these are those those are some of the most insecure guys I've ever met. Like in my entire life. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know why that is, but I'm just men a lot. They're very insecure, you know. It's like, you know, and you know, I just um, I just think that's some that's what these guys have to deal with. They have to deal with their insecurities somehow, some way, you know. But hey, you know, the hate is real out here, man. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. A lot of folks don't understand that, man. Like, you brothers out here in the dating scene, it's like some of these women are, it's not like they don't like you, you know, because there's a lot of flaky women in Asia, you know, especially in places like Japan, in Thailand. Like, you know, some of these men that are fantasizing about Asian women, you know, hoping and praying and you know the day that they could just get up and move to asia to be around asian women because they think american women ain't shit it's like that's the thing you go the 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 number one thing you're gonna realize when you deal with asian women out here is they're extremely flaky not because it has anything to do with them not liking you it's just they just don't know how to handle it yeah, they think they just twice. don't know how to handle like... it most of the time. <laughs> yeah, they just don't know how to handle it, and plus a lot of women they're insecure too. Yeah, uh, I I met some women where they're they're thinking that you know they put they put so much value into what their friends and everyone else thinks, and a lot of time that sabotages the the relationship. You know, I'm like, so. And then you got some women where they they assume one thing. They assume that you're thinking one thing without even saying anything. And I'll be like, no, I wasn't thinking like that at all. So they insecure, too. So you got the guys insecure and the woman insecure. So go figure. So it's like total chaos out here. <laughs> Right, and, and when you're dating a woman from a different background, a different culture, oh the, boy, the, the, the shit that they assume that's on your mind is some of the weirdest, it's ridiculous shit ever. Yeah, yeah, it's yeah. like so, it's so like, that's how you think. <laughs> so, so, so that's why I always say the grass is never green on the other side. It's a different type of grass. So I always looked at it like, man, look what I have to deal with being with. Me one of these other women long term my goodness i'd rather just date from a distance or call you when i call you or or or, or spend time with you but i ain't really gonna have a baby with you or, or plan anything long term i might plan something long term but as far as kids you know i gotta really i gotta really you got to really be by my side for a long time for me to do take that leap <laughs> and bring kids in the world with you. That's one of the main reasons why I don't I don't have kids because of that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I remember one time uh, there was this Chinese woman, and she was she was sitting down with this other Korean woman that I know. I actually spoke to that Korean woman today. She's she's flying back to Korea. I told her to pick up some stuff for me. Okay. She, you know, she finds she like twenty, I think she's like twenty five or twenty six. You know, she she's in that no good stage. Yeah. <clears throat> but I remember th- them two were sitting together. I went over to say hello to both of them, but for some reason, instead of like looking at both of them and saying hello, I said I made eye contact with the Korean woman first, and then. <clears throat> Before I could even turn to the Chinese woman and say hello to her too, she jumped in and said, "Hey, did you say hello to her first because she's prettier than me and I'm ugly?" And she was dead ass serious when she asked me that. Oh I'm yeah, like, <laughs> very insecure, man. I'm, I'm like, what very. the fuck is wrong with you? <laughs> yeah, yeah. I, I just matter of fact, I just I uploaded a video today about that. But a woman being so insecure, and you got a lot of women that think just because a guy is in their presence or a guy that's in a relationship with them, they they 
the guy is supposed to somehow ignore every other woman that's coming around him out in public. I said, look, a guy, can, it's okay to look. I mean, he just don't have to touch, but it's okay to look. And if you're a woman with a guy in a relationship with a guy or getting to know a guy, you're not the beautifulest woman in the world. That's just, just, yeah. I mean, that's just reality. You might be the best looking girl for him, which is cool. But let's not, let's not, let's not get our egos blown. <laughs> I mean, you're not the best looking woman in the world. I mean, come on. Yeah, but you got a lot of women that are kind of like very irrational about about this. They're like, "Hey, why are you looking at? Why are you gave my friend a comment?" I'm like, "What? What's wrong exactly, with that?" Exactly. <laughs> exactly. I mean, especially in Asia, um, a lot of these women like that are just controlling. That that's that's the norm out here. I see a lot of married guys go through that. I know one guy. Um, he's married to this Japanese woman. His wife wants him to delete and unfollow all the women that's on his, on his Instagram, all the women that's on his Facebook, including oh, his mother. Just, including his ridiculous. mother. I, I'm, that's just too much time. I'm not doing all that. That's ridiculous. But he's he's married to this woman, and he has a kid by her. And that's the that's thing. True. That's why I said, like, getting that's married ridiculous. in Asia and having kids in Asia is the worst thing you could do. <laughs> yeah, I, I wouldn't. Me personally, I would never have my kid in Japan. I, I would never do that. That you know, just me being over there for almost four years. This, the 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 experience that I've had, I'm like, oh no, I I can't. I would never have no kids over here. No way in hell over my dead body. <laughs> I made a lot of mistakes in my life, but I would not put put my seed through this. No way. You know? Right. Right. <clears throat> I know another guy. Um, He went over to Japan on a fake degree. He's been living there for like, I think he's been living there for like five or six years now, right? Okay. And he got with this woman, told her all his business. She's very controlling. He hasn't had that much experience with women back home in America. So he's like, nah, I'm going to just do whatever she wants me to do because if Why? I can't, if, I mean, he, he he's a simp like that. I don't talk to him no more, but he's a okay. simp like that. But the thing is, is there's been many times that she threatened to call the police on him saying that he's working on, uh, you know, a bogus degree. You know, he's maintained his visa for this long. So why did he tell know. her? Why did he tell anybody that anyway about his bogus degree? <laughs> there's some things you should. There's some things you should keep to yourself, and that's Absolutely. one of them. <laughs> you know, that's and then that's see that's that that's from on her. That's kind of. Um, you know, that's just very spiteful and vindictive, and that's just, you know, for her to even threaten him like that, that's just, that's horrible on her <clears throat> part. To even use some, something like that against the dude. I mean, I'm not, even though what he did is, I'm not saying he's right, but come on. How are you going to live with somebody in the same household? And be like, I'm going to expose you as a fraud with your fake degree. <clears throat> Come on. That's just, yeah, see, that's foul. See, only in America and maybe, you know, a few other Western countries where, you know, you can, you know, if you're a man of a certain age and you meet up with another woman of a certain age, you know, who's single, that you guys can get with each other and things can work out. You know, a woman over 25 <clears throat> who's single in America still has normal behavior. These yeah. women out here in Asia, <laughs> I mean, I mean, like, a, a, a lot of their behavior, it's like, 
It's dysfunctional. You're describing, <laughs> yeah, you're, dis, you're, you're, dis, you're describing women that should be in a psych ward. Yeah. You know, that needs to be on medication. Yeah. You know, you, 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 got, you literally have women out here killing their husband. I mean, I could pull up so many stories in China of women who were in these relationships with, like, Caucasian men. They were batshit crazy. It happens out here in Thailand all the time. And he was like, hey, I can't do this no more. Like, you know, you, you, you're controlling this, that, and the third. I just want to get a divorce. Or I just want to break up and do my own thing, and you do your own thing. And they end up killing the guy. Or oh. they end up, you know, making up some, some bullshit to put him in jail. It's like, oh, if okay. I can't have you, nobody else can have you. Because Oh, that's that, uh... <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's that that mentality. Okay. No, that, that's that's that love can't wait right there. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, nah, if I can't have you, nobody, nobody can. can. I'm a, yeah, a yeah. bow. You just let let them have it. Shoot them or stab them or something. Spe- <laughs> especially the especially the white guys. Man, you yeah. know, white guys they think like, all right, you know, the red carpet is going to be rolled out for me when I'm move out here and most of the time it will but you can't break up with these women like you norm like a normal human being out west like you can't do that they worship you so when you leave <laughs> right what do you, you mean you leave me, yeah what do you mean yeah see we have see the rest of us we have an advantage because when we leave they say oh okay go ahead <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. see we have an advantage when it comes to that <laughs> they're almost happy but, that you're gone. They'd be like, "Good, the point, you know, I, yeah." I want to see this other dude anyway. It depending on how you look at it. You know, you can look at it as, as an advantage, or you can look at it as as a privilege. <laughs> Nobody coming yeah. after us when we leave. <laughs> Thank God. Right. He agrees. Woo wee. <laughs> you know, I mean, I mean, I, th- there was this one story where. This woman, you see, this white dude, he married this woman, and, and the white dude was a simp from the get-go. This yeah, white dude okay. married some woman who was working uh, behind a cash register at some, uh, like at a 7-Eleven or some shit, in, in, or the equivalency of a 7-Eleven in China. You know, like she, she, like she came from a poor family, a poor background. This dude okay. was like the, was, you know, he was, one of the top guys at this company, like an executive or some shit, some white guy. So he gets with her. They have two kids. They get married. And for some reason, um, like she had a lot of character flaws. Like okay. She was very lazy. She didn't, she wasn't looking out for the kids. She wasn't taking care of the kids properly when the husband was gone. You know, his family on the you know, on his side of the family, his, his parents didn't like her, and she was very abusive. Oh, like, okay. I think he had, he had, like, a, a huge gash on his hand, and his parents asked him, like, hey, how did you get that gash? He was like, you know, my, my wife, you know, sh- she gets violent. Like, she's physical mm-hmm. like that. He's like, Beating why don't you, you just up. leave? Yeah, and, and he was like, well, I'm no, scared man. to leave. He's like, I'm oh, scared yeah. to leave. So one, t- one day he just he just – was like, fuck it, I'm going to leave. You know, he's like, I want to get a divorce. And then he took the kids with him. Uh-huh. And a woman <laughs> showed up to his house one day uh, with, with her brother and some other guy. He had him, the kids, and his new girlfriend over there. And the woman, the woman killed her ex-husband, stabbed the other woman, and hit like a, like a vein, you know, or a... Uh, like a, an artery or some shit, blood is gushing everywhere. So, so what the other, what the two guys were doing? Um, shit, I don't know. Just standing there, you know, as support. I, I don't, I don't know. You know? <laughs> okay. But she, she sliced this woman's arm to the bone. Like to this day, she, like she's she's handicapped. She can't use that arm. I think she got her arm amputated. Wow. And it was like she was a very. The woman whose arm got sliced up, she was a very attractive woman. But, you know, and that's another thing. Asian men, their standards are so high. It don't matter if you find, if you have any sort of ailments, 
<laughs> or illness or disease or whatever, they're gone. It don't matter if you have a family with them. If, if you're sick, something's wrong with you, if you, if you got bad knees or if you got a limp or if you got a lazy eye or if your hearing is bad <laughs> in one ear, <laughs> they don't yeah. give a damn. Like, it, it's a wrap. Exactly. Exactly, yeah. <laughs> That's why I think these a lot of these women are not going to be able to live up to their standards. Yeah. You know? Yeah, it's That's like it. your know, man could be like, "Hey, what's wrong with you? Like, you don't hear me calling you? Oh, I'm sorry. Like, I have bad hearing in my right ear. <laughs> like, you got bad hearing. Yeah, yeah. You, you got know, to go. <laughs> yeah, you know, I, I had an infection in my ear, in my right ear, and I had to get surgery. It was like years ago, so I have. You know, bad hearing in my right ear. <laughs> yeah, that dude. So like, hey, 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 I, you got uh, to go. Let me find me. In, like, hey, I'm, I need, I'm, I need I'm, a replacement. Yeah, he like, hey, <laughs> hold on, I, I'm finna go to the restroom real quick. <laughs> yeah, you know, it's like, it's like, um, that's why a lot of the women come <clears> over <throat> here, but they have more freedom over here. Yeah. You know, see, but they don't see it that way, or maybe they won't admit to it. I don't know. You see, even or, but. A lot of these women come over here, you know, they can get a job, have a car, have their own place, invest their money and uh, buy whatever they want, go shopping, go to the mall. They can talk. <laughs> you know, they can have sex with as many guys as they want. And and the, the new guys, they don't have to, have to know anything about it. And even if they get found out, they can always move two to four hours away to a totally different state, totally different city, and start all over again. Yeah, you could be whatever you want out there. And that's the thing. You could be ugly in America and still pull. Yeah. Know, see, see they're they not, they not getting that in over anywhere else like that. Yeah, in China, if, if you consider it ugly. <laughs> Coming to America, you're like, oh, my gosh, she's gorgeous. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> If you if you consider ugly yeah. in China, you're gonna be a virgin for the rest of your life. Exactly. You know, <laughs> you, you got women in, in Japan that's forty, she probably ain't got laid in five to ten years. All right. And and, and there's yeah. a lot of there's a lot of there's a lot of brothers there's a lot of people in, in America, they say, Man, I don't I don't like Chinese women, I don't find them attractive, there's this, there's that, this, this, that, and the third. Okay. It's like, no, you don't. You don't understand. Like most attractive Chinese women, they don't want to leave China because there's forty exactly. million more men than women there. So they have a lot of options. They're getting money out of out of a lot of those dudes over there. They're paid in the shade. They don't. They're like, why the fuck would I want to leave? Like it's too much. Yeah, money yeah. Over here. Like I always say, <laughs> the best. I always say the best looking Japanese woman. Is in Japan. She's not in America. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, you know, you know, some some guy was like, "Hey, where?" Somebody somebody on my timeline said, "Hey, where do I meet the best Japanese girls at?" I said, "In Japan. <laughs> <laughs> it's not going to be in America." <laughs> yeah. yeah. They the leftover. <laughs> they the leftover yeah. of the leftover. Yeah. Exactly. Could, I mean. These women, like, y'all don't, a lot of y'all don't understand. These women are so ugly, they can't even get a job. They're overqualified, and be, because they're so open, and a lot of times, like, it, it just comes across as rude and disrespectful, but that's the culture out here. They, they'll tell yeah. them, like, hey, you know, we like your You're resume. You're ugly. <laughs> ugly. I'm exactly. like, what? <laughs> yeah. You can't you can't work as a Oof. stewardess. You 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 ugly. <laughs> like, yeah. And then you had um I remember I was in a restaurant in Japan. This is like what two, three this is like what three years ago. And this waitress was like she called herself ugly. I'm like, Whoa, where'd that come from? You know? That caught me off guard. I never I never heard that before. I mean <clears throat> but I said, you know, 'cause you know, I haven't been to Japan in sixteen years up to that point. So I'm oh, like, damn. okay. I said, okay. I forgot where I'm at now. You know, I'm not in America. You know, <laughs> but yeah, 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 I mean, yeah. They're, they're, pre they're pretty open. They'll be like, ah, yeah. oh, she's ugly. You know, I'm like, whoa. 
friend. Yeah, and, that, and that's the thing, man. Ugly people, they got ugly jobs in Asia. Like, yeah. They, they, they in the back. They work yeah. nights. <clears throat> yeah. They They're don't, not uh, seen during the day. Yeah. Yeah. If you're if they overweight, fat or overweight, it's like, oh, no. Yeah. No, you're not going to be working. And if you're working in the office, you're going to be working in the back of the office. You're not going to be at the front desk. No. <laughs> You downstairs in the basement, if you are. Yeah, <laughs> that, that type of deal, you know. And they don't make no bones about it. They don't, you know, no one ever challenges uh, authority over there either. That's another thing that I see. Very few. It's rare. It happens, but that person going to have to be like some, he affiliated with some type of group or, you know, either he's, uh, from a well-known family or something like that. Yeah. But but he can't just be an average person. Oh no, challenging an authority. I'm like, what? Who who you think you're supposed to be? <laughs> yeah, and that's another thing. Like they they'll let it be known if you're fat, also. You know, oh yeah. They, they, they'll be like, hey, look, you know, your resume is jumping out. I like the university you came from. You smart as hell. You have this, but you fat. Hell, you yeah. fat and you ugly. I have no use yeah. for you at all. They like they openly tell people that. Yeah, there's a out here there's a, that's what. Yeah, there's a guy that um, there's a girl here in America that um, I think she works for FedEx, and uh, I think it's FedEx or UPS, one of those companies. But it's, it, they got it's a contractor company that they work with. They're like partners. And she was trying to get a job with this company. And she said the Japanese guy told her that, you know, I like your resume and everything, but the reason why I'm sorry I can't hire you because you're uh you're you're fat. <laughs> I'm like, he actually said that shit. And they and she said she got an attorney. She she sued. <laughs> oh shit. That's a you got it. You got you got a case. <laughs> I yeah, said, yeah, see, I, can't, I can't believe he actually came out and said that shit. <laughs> yeah, you see, because that's normal where they're from. Yeah. that's that's he, he thinks like, okay, from a Japanese person, I'm talking to another Japanese person. Yeah. And you're not supposed to tell, you know, that that's breaking code. Like, you're not supposed to tell on each other. But she was like, no, damn that. We in America. I'm finna, she was probably happy. You know, he told her that because she's probably made more money suing the company for him saying yep. that than her yep. actually getting the job. You know, yep. like it's that's why, and that's why I tell a lot of men that come over here that want to come over here to Asia. I'm like, you guys need to reevaluate, you know, your your decisions in life before you think about coming over here. Talk to more women over there where you're at in America, because. These women are the women that not only ostracize from their society, but they're being told that they're ugly, they're fat. That's why when you get on dates with women over here, it could be one of the most beautiful women you've ever met, you know, out here in Asia. But her mind is gone because... Yeah, she told you know, so, she, you're ugly, you're fat, been, you're, you're big right. lips, all kind of stuff, man. <laughs> You're, you're, yeah. you're ugly, you're fat, and you're too old. So when you get on a date with them, they tell you, like, oh, I'm fat, so, you know, I can't do this. And you're like, what? You're not fat. No, 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 no. No, don't tell me I'm not fat. I'm fat. I'm fat. I'm fat. Yeah. I'm fat. This, they'll say it every yeah, single that. day. I'm fat and I'm ugly. Yeah. So you can't really, you can't, if you're a positive, forward-thinking guy, you can't be around a woman that's like that. Yeah. That ain't going to work. <laughs> <laughs> and after a while, you you start thinking like, "Damn, like I can't, if she, if, I can't she, be around her." Shit. If she has low self esteem and she yes, keeps saying that she's fat and she's ugly, then what am I doing? What does that say about me? <laughs> like, yeah. why is she with me? It's like, am I all that she can get? Like, am I? Does she think I'm a leftover like her? Like, <laughs> exactly. So that that shit ain't gonna work. You gotta let her go. <laughs> and the ones that can't even leave their country, they're so thirsty that they start paying 
to, for boyfriends. They start renting boyfriends. They start paying. Oh you know, yeah, a, a boyfriend to come around their family and to go to certain holiday events and you know a yeah, lot of gotta, women they're paying for sex in in Asia. Yeah, it's a lot of they got a lot of gigolos over there too. Uh-huh. A lot of that going on. Yeah, a lot of that going on. A lot of them older women, even some young women, but uh, well, a lot of women in like late thirties and forties and fifties they got they got, have gigolos. And a lot of times, it's not just about the sex. They just want somebody to keep them company for a couple of hours. <clears throat> yeah. Yeah, yeah that I, is true. I, yeah, because like I said, a lot of these women, they have after work, they, they're by themselves a lot. They're lonely. <laughs> and it's been going on for, ye- for years <laughs> for them. Years. Because uh, a lot of these women... They're not going to talk to foreigners. They're not like going to do it. Woman, like that one woman in that video. Oh, my God. Like That shit was so sad, the way she was just sitting there. She was... Yeah. She had a sad look on her face. I mean, she was literally... She had... And then what the fuck are you doing with a big wraparound couch? Like, you know, a wraparound couch, that's supposed to fit like... That's like a family. Yeah, family. that's a family couch. Yeah. Like, you can't... Yeah. <laughs> yeah, she's spending all this money on stuff that she don't really need. <laughs> it, ain't, it ain't made for it's made for a family, not for a single miserable chick like yourself. Poor little sap. <laughs> you you getting up on top of uh, you know you, you got your wooden a, a wooden ladder. That shit's probably shaking. You changing light? Hell, the cameraman didn't even help you. The cameraman yeah. didn't like, hey, hey, let me let me hold that ladder for you before you fall. No, he was like, shit, no, damn. Go man. ahead. <laughs> you forty one. Yeah, you have no. There, there is no use for you out here in society. Yeah, it's hard. Ain't nobody, on, it's, 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 ain't nobody it's buying hard. flowers anymore. Yeah, I'm telling you. <laughs> you think it's hard being? You think it's hard being a woman in America? You go to some of these other countries, boy. You'd be like, oh my god. Huh. A lot, of, you know, like a lot of these men. I mean, y'all, y'all don't understand how many dudes, you know, that I that I've spoken to, that wants to get the hell out of America and date Asian women. I'm like, y'all don't understand how good y'all have it. There are men out here that will, there are men and women out here that will kill to go to America and get away. From this strict society, I'm like, y'all don't yeah. understand. I I know a guy. I swear to God, I know a guy, a black dude. He wanted to, cause you know, in certain countries, if you want to gain citizenship, to be a citizen of another country, you have to give up your citizen. You know, your passport, your citizenship. To America, you forfeit your citizenship. Yeah. This yeah. this black dude wanted to give up his American citizenship to become a Japanese citizen. Wow. Okay. I'm like, why? <laughs> well, I hope I hope it's working out for him. You know. <laughs> that's a that's a big sac- that's a huge sacrifice he made. Yeah. You know? I mean, you 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 coming out here. You coming out here where, hell, you think th- that you you think that woman's boss or, you know, uh, the person interviewing her was rude and disrespectful. You got to listen to what some of these women's parents are telling them. Oh my Is it, god! Hell, some of their parents, some of their parents are telling them, "You fat, you ugly." <laughs> oh my god! <laughs> I'm like, yeah. Y'all really want these women out here, man? Like, come on, man. <laughs> like, I yeah, mean, yeah. Just, yeah. just have the bullshit sex with them and keep it moving. Y'all want to get married to these miserable ass women. They, their parents are telling them how much of a failure you are, how ugly you are. Do you know? How, do you know? Like, it's average out here in Asia. Th- their parents out here, they don't tell them that they love them. Nope. That that concept doesn't really exist. Really, yeah, really don't. So you, so so 
y'all want to get married and have children with a woman who she's too fat to get a job. She's too ugly to get a job. She's too smart to get with her own men. Her, her ass is too big to be with her own man. Uh, she's too opinionated to be with her own man. Her mother's saying she's ugly. Her father's saying she's ugly. You know, her mother and father telling her, you need to lose weight. You need to do this. You need to do that. And they never t- told them that they've loved them ever. Y'all, this, this is a woman that don't. I mean, That's the average person don't really know what love is, but she's never felt affection coming from her own parents, love and affection coming from her own parents ever again. And you want that passed down to your children? Yeah, that's what you're going to get most of the time. You're going to, um, <laughs> if you meet a woman, the average woman you're going to meet, you're going to have to build her, build her self-esteem up over time. Oh, oh man, and, and, and don't, and don't, and, and and don't try to tell these women about, you know, racial injustice. Oh my god! Going on in America. Oh <laughs> they be, my god! All these women are cowards. <clears throat> man, you tell a woman like, man, you know, it's hard being black in America. Look at what's going on in the news. You showing them the look, look, look. You know, they this don't, person they, killed him. They don't want to look off. at it. They're like, I don't want to see that shit. They don't want to look at it. They'll tell hey, you that like, I don't want to see that shit. I got nothing to do with me. <laughs> They're the now biggest sitting, coward. Now you sitting at home with two kids, and you married, <clears throat> and you sitting there looking like a jackass. Like damn. <laughs> and you just you just learned that you've been living with a coward for all these years, and you had kids by her. You're like, oh my <clears throat> gosh, you know. <laughs> what do you do in that situation? <laughs> uh, here, here, this woman, here, your dumbass then bought all sorts of cultural undergarments, cu- cultural garments, you know, from her culture so you can wear. You're learning about her culture. You know her language. You you know, you know everything about this woman's culture. She don't even know her own shit. She was like, I don't give a damn about that. <laughs> like, I don't, but you know it. Yeah. Yeah, you know, exactly. Yeah. You, you I, I've seen brothers get, you know, cultural tattoos over here, tied tattoos. I just met a dude yesterday, black dude. He had the chain. He had like a prominent figure, uh, you know, a, a tied prominent figure, uh, and, and like a, you know, a chain of him, an image of him around his ch- around his neck. I'm like, what the fuck? You know, you, you guys come over here to do all that <clears throat> to find out. That is too late later on that you with an emotionless, you know, a so, coward, uh, like a you social said. A, a sociopath, basically. <laughs> That's who you with most in most cases you with a sociopath. <laughs> yeah. You know? Sad but true, yeah. You know? But you don't wanna have no seed with them on a, a woman that's like that. Well, you in trouble. <laughs> that happens, <laughs> and, and, and not only that, not only you with the sociopath who's too fat, too ugly to be with anybody, to go anywhere. <laughs> she she can't even come around her parents because they calling her fat and ugly. You know, yeah. now you got kids, you got biracial kids who hate you because they're mixed because they're black. Yeah. Because they got curly hair. They hate you. And your dumb ass don't want to leave because you know, you 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 you've never been outside uh Arkansas. You've never been outside Nebraska. You have never been outside of New York City. So you think all of America is just like Delaware or New Hampshire. <laughs> so yeah. you're too scared to go back. And where there's there's plenty of opportunities in the next town over, you know. And but you're too scared to go back, and you 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 putting you making your kids suffer. Now, you know they're letting you know how much of a fuck up you are, you know, for even staying there, having children by this woman, and not bringing them back to them. It's just 
Which is yeah, a bad man, situation I, I, all the way around, really. <laughs> 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 really, man. Well, hey, man, um, man, we've been on here for a while. Oh. Yeah, yeah. So, yeah. all right, so we we'll wrap this up. You got any final words? No, that's it, man. Just um, check me out on uh, Guy on Girl TV or check out my website, ChooseYourRelationships.com and go get my book on Amazon, Love Can't Wait and A Chicken's Guide to Having Women Beg for You, Sex, Lust, and Lies. Okay, that's what's it. We open, we out. What I'm going to do is I'm going to chop this up into three segments. I don't want to put this whole three-hour shit online. I'll probably chop it up into an hour apiece or maybe 30 minutes. You know, I, I want to treat this like a a Thanksgiving dinner. You know what I'm saying? Like, we're going to make this turkey last for about a week, two weeks here. So, <laughs> Cool. All right, then. All right. All right, peace.